like it's loaded time for it. Yep, we're waiting, we're waiting. We're waiting, waiting. Wait, 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 in. And the button has been pushed. Everybody say hi, 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 hi. Ahoy! Awesome. Welcome back to MLPTG The Banner Mains, episode 140. Tick Toka. But what will happen today? That is for me to know and you to find out. As for what happened last time, so sail. Last time on the Welcome. northern party adventures, the party had picked up a, in the train um, outside of, was that advocacy, right? Yes. Yeah, sport advocacy. We jumped right on the train as we saw Cher and Babbage in their own train speeding past with the main stitch to help uh, operate the train. We engaged in a uh, tense and thrilling train chase battle where we learned a little bit about how the uh, the train lines, the rail system in Astalon works, uh, powered by little uh, electrical sprite elemental. And uh, there was a little bit of warfare being creative between triple jumping from train to train and uh, some mind control that made Babbage throw out some of his sprites. Uh, we carried it on all the way in towards the uh, clockwork jungle. The trees got dense, what looked like trees. Uh, we weren't able to see, however, until our train actually crashed. It went off of its rail. And everyone was okay, including our NPC uh, inventor friend and the main stitch. We found out that these trees around us were actually mechanical trees. And this forest was a clockwork forest, or a clockwork jungle, if you will. Um, Cher had also failed to um, make it into deeper into the jungle, though we can't see exactly where she was because her line went in a different direction. Uh, as we started looking around the forest, we found an inactive uh, clockwork, which we were able to power on, and he introduced himself as NUTS, which stands for something that I don't quite remember, but it is an anagram. And he seems to have been inactive since before the initial uh, launch of Inaki Kai. And, um, well, we have... Uh, Taking him with us as we start to fill in some of the gaps of information and see what else, what other, what other information we can get from him as we approach Goldenport. Uh, as we start exploring the Clockwork Forest, still in a rush to get there ahead of Share, we encountered some steam-backed Clockwork Gorillas. Uh, we had a small little scuffle with them, uh, relatively harmless, and then we had a chance to explore the rest of the forest and some of them were calm and peaceful wildlife as we made our way through the forest we were eventually uh fallen into a pit trap uh, pitfall um where that was set up by a native tribe of clockworks they recognized fortuna as a goddess and fortuna was able to talk them into letting us out of the hole uh they showed us where they in, they received their instruction from a fax machine. That's where they get their messages from the gods. And we learned through uh, communication that there is a bit of a turf war between other natives and a big baddie called King Cog, who is often given organics as a form of sacrifice. That's a good way to put it. <clears throat> and yeah, that, uh, that's a pretty good summation. Good job. And uh, they kind of like took you guys, meandered um, forward through the uh, the forest, saying, you know, like they want to bring you to their civilization. Obviously, it would uh, not to you'd not be very kind if you didn't invite the god you pay homage to to the place where you live. Um, no one questioned why the god didn't know how to get there in the first place. Uh, I'm sure it's fine, uh, but they did guide you guys through the forest. Uh, pulling aside uh, various different wires and cables and that kind of thing that were actually, uh, you know, like uh, obscuring a lot of this civilization from like view. vines. Yeah, exactly. And uh, upon um, revealing the civilization, you guys see what seems to be a massive 
Um, Transformer, more or less. You know, these little like cylindrical things that you find on motherboards and those kind of things as like a central sort of a uh, hub uh, is the first thing into the civilization. That's where I'm going to bring you guys right over here. As from the distance, this is pretty much what you guys see. Imagine just off to the side of the map or something. Massive, oh, wow. massive wow. buildings laid out like, I mean, to us, what would seem like a motherboard. Oh yeah, this does look like a motherboard. <laughs> um, a little bit. Yeah, various, uh, various different fountains, buildings, electrical units zapping from the top, all that different clockwork wilderness, um, kind of interacting with these spaces, and the uh, the practitioners who are kind of traveling with you, kind of like uh, nod. Behold, Tiktoka, they say very succinctly. As they uh, kind of nod and they continue leading you guys forward, if you guys are following, you start to hear a little bit more clearly this, like, thrum almost. It, it's one of those things where you didn't really maybe notice it initially, especially with all the wildlife around, but after walking toward the civilization here a little bit more, where there is probably notably less wildlife and just this just general vicinity, you definitely start picking up on, like, this ambient, constant like ticking, this thrum, this rhythm that kind of reverberates through the city very quietly. All the different things kind of uh, going to this same tick, tick, tick. Like, you know, just like... <laughs> Are we inside a clock? What is that ticking? Uh, and one of them, like, they don't uh, look back. I continue kind of like guiding you through. It is the heartbeat of the city and the jungle itself. It connects us all. They say very succinctly. Oh, is there yeah. any rust in this place? Rust. Um, you see, you do see like um on, on metals that that do rust and not tarnish. Yes, you do see some rust, uh, though, not very much. All things considered, the the thing that's lacking here is the thing that's pretty important to mm. making rust, which is oil. Or, sorry, uh, water, sorry. Uh, as, yeah. um, you know, like, there is seemingly streams that kind of run nearby that, you know, have oil in it that are actually flowing kind of freely. Uh, it's just definitely an oil that, that coats a lot of the wildlife and flowers. I say wildlife, clockwork wildlife, if you will. Uh, well, I'm no fan of this. Yeah, definitely can't drink that particular water. Um, Where did all this come from? Was this all built like this, or did this used to be... In a similar sense to the curse. Uh, are you asking me or party? Uh, I, am I mistaken? The clockworks are the ones with the curse, or is it the steel arts? Uh, uh, clockwork ponies are the ones that have the curse. Right, uh, and that's what they are. So Swift is thinking, like, uh, kind of thinking aloud, like, was this just built like this, or was maybe the entire city and jungle cursed in the same sense that the how the clockwork ponies are cursed? Mm -hmm. And he's thinking out loud. Hmm. Now look like steel hearts. Like how did steel hearts? Oh, these are steel hearts, right? I'm getting the two mixed up. I'm uh I'm not intending to be racist, I just <laughs> Okay, look 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 here, it's it's very simple. Steel hearts, they look uh, I mean look at them. They 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 they're uh much more rudimentary usually you look at it i mean, I mean they're actual that they're not leading to anything they are mm. not leading things at all right they're made of parts yeah, it's, it, 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 they're closer to a toaster than an actual board okay <laughs> and you're a clockwork again right no no i'm i'm pretty sure i'm a steel hat uh okay Anyways, was what? this just all built like this? I don't know. I'm sorry, Electra. I didn't mean to interrupt. It's all good. Uh, from what I've heard, steel hearts are more like living metal, where clockworks are more like a machine. What? I like hearing your voice, but I didn't quite clear it up for me. Hmm. Uh, if you guys wish for more information on that particular thing, I can totally take a society check, as that's yeah. usually ancestry-related. Or, or crap. <laughs> Nuts, come over here, Nuts! 
Huh? Huh? And like Nuts is like looking at like he he's kind of like looking at uh the river of oil and he pulls his head back up and you see like there's like a little sucker fish that's stuck to his face and it's one of the little clockwork ones that jumped out of the water. Ah! Ah, get it off! Uh, <laughs> Swift. Swift. Um, you, you you think it through. Cure and advice. Fortuna. The whole. Yeah. So pretty much. Um, clockworks. Uh, you, you piece it together in your head here. Clockworks. Um, were once normal ponies. They were cursed by the gods of nature after building Golden Port. Uh, from when the original Banner Mains effectively uh had their little spaddle, if you will. Um, the nature gods did not like the people who made Golden Port, and thusly, pretty much said, you know. If you like clockwork so much, why don't you just marry it and then maybe turn them into clockworks pretty much. Mm, right. Very petty. Very petty. Yeah. So like and then steel hearts, like what Fortuna is, um, are were manufactured. Those guys actually okay. like they're not born. You literally make them and then imbue them with some kind of life somehow. But a town like this, where how might this have come to be? A town like this? You're looking down. That would actually be a crafting check. Mm, not by me. <laughs> uh, I mean, let me do a crafting check. I think I think I got good. Because I was, right? yeah, I was looking when we were walking past uh, the trees and those quote unquote, or uh, he has this quote gesture with his hopes vines. Like, did they just bring all those things out here and set them up that way? They there certainly didn't grow that way. Did they make the whole forest? Forest? Just build it? Everything here looks artificial, I think. It does look pretty artificial, Madam Fortuna. With your crafting, you can get a little bit more insight here. You get a you get a question. It's a success. What's your no, question? I'll give this question to to Swift. What's your question? What um like was the forest in like a town like this? Was it built initially as like with mechanical parts like was it built specifically this way or was it a regular town in a regular jungle that was caught up in the curse of the gods uh with that crafting check glean that well uh historically you're unsure but it definitely seems that the um trees and nature and animals and everything that's around here kind of just seems to be a product of the land itself everything kind of sprouts up obviously from this clockwork area like all these gears and everything that are still under hoof uh that kind of makes up all this underbrush there's still like dirt in that kind of thing but it definitely shifts you see these places in the dirt where it's shifting where it's ticking it's moving dirt everything just kind of seems to be almost functioning to keep this ecosystem working and Fortuna. What's driving it? Yeah, but yeah, what's that over the situation? Well, uh, that's, like, yeah. just, like, like, where did, like, the, there's a whole Mother Nature thing, but this is not Mother Nature. Is this just, or is it just Mother Nature with robots? And how did that originate? I'm getting existential. Yeah. <laughs> Who's responsible for this? Was this, was this just, is this just Golden Port playing a prank on us, or was this earring got caught in the fucking clockwork? that had. the locals that are traveling with you will probably uh like look toward we have been here for generations we will bring you to our chief uh chief ticklock he will explain to you more and any questions you might have ah well we appreciate that i might have an idea where's nuts where is he uh, he's still fighting the fish that's on his helmet you down with it? That Right, he, he unsticks it and it accidentally hits your window, Fortuna, and now the fish Ow. is just sticking to your window. Ah, I'm, ah, uh, yes! That sounds, um, uh, tick lock, okay, huh? Wait, first of all, is, is, is this a mechanical fish? Yeah, it's just kind of like sucking on your window right now. Give me a fortitude save. Well, okay. uh, huh. can, can, can I grab the fish? Uh, you can, but you still need a fortitude save because you're made of uh, machinations and it's it's sucking on you. <laughs> yeah, you you definitely stave off whatever this fish is trying to do, no problem. But it's definitely trying to to sap some energy from you. It seems. <laughs> can I grab it? Yeah, you grab it. 
kind of you could. Thump. Yeah. Yum. And there it goes. You kind of hear this little whistling sound, and probably sticks onto a tree somewhere. Um, what? It sticks onto a tree yeah, somewhere. I, I grabbed it and I tried to eat it. Oh, eat it, not yeet it. Okay, sorry. Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you try to eat it. crunch, crunch. Yeah, um, you get uh, two points of HP back because you not crunch on this fish. Yeah, this it's sushi time somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nuts, it's just kind of... Anyway, that's... What? Huh? You said it's sushi time somewhere in the world. I said yeah. that place is somewhere right... Or that place is right here. <laughs> yeah. Again, anyway, uh... Here, here's the thing. Uh, I'm gonna ease you up on all your problems. But you said you missed the lunch, right? Uh... Uh huh. I I I hope not. I, I you guys told me I did, but I think you're just trying to play a crank on me now. Okay, look, 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 look. Here's the thing. Launch of what? Ah, uh, the sea engine. He says, like, like matter okay. of factly. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So here, here's here's the thing. Was this was this old giant city already there when uh you know? During what, that time, was this whole? Do you life? remember? Yeah. Was this whole? When the sea engine was, was being constructed, was, was this place here? Well, was this place here? Is what you're saying? What you're asking? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and he kind of like shakes his head. Is like, I don't remember an artificial forest. No. He says, like shaking his head. Uh, I. I do I look like an urban explorer, uh, a rural explorer, a jungle explorer, if you will? No. We just... found you in the jungle. I, I, I am a, I am a scientist. He says, uh, putting up his hoof. I thought this guy was a druid. Not me? Uh, no, 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 no. I'm a scientist. Shakes his head. No bullshit. No actual bullshit. Meanly, that was a druid last session, wasn't not, he? I know. I'm. I'm not. Well, what? I didn't say druid. I, I remember you said that the guy was a druid last session. What the fuck? Am I having fucking brain worm? I, I think that that's a that's a brain worm right there. Um. I don't believe I've said that this guy's a druid. I I don't know. I can't vouch. I feel like it could have been either. I mentioned that all the uh, people that you're currently leading you into the city look druidic and seem to have a lot of druidic stuff in nature. That was definitely a point I brought up. Wait, uh, wait, hang on. Before we move on, let's, wait, where's that other guy? Where's the inventor guy? Uh, inventor guy is just like, he's kind of taking notes. He, he's probably been in the background asking nuts a whole lot of questions, right? Uh, he's kind of like, a, I say, this is this is quite, quite the adventure. Is this what you okay. panamates do all the time? Look, have, you, have you ever been to Goldenfoot before? Uh, 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 mm, well, it's... Look, I have uh, been there in spirit. I have been there okay, yeah, technically. Yeah, don't, don't okay, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, we, we gotta get answers out of this. Okay, let's move on. Let's just go to the chief. Yeah, and uh, it doesn't take you guys long. They actually kind of like, um, they bring you guys to what almost seems like uh, just, just like a series of vines, like really tough vines that kind of loop toward the city, and they kind of all just like hop on them. And as as they do, these like uh, well oiled like clasp, like the vines kind of come up, clasp around them, and they just kind of like down the vine toward the city, one by one, almost like expecting you guys to do the same. And your two guys go that way. What are you guys doing? Uh, Swift looks up from Electro. Wait, what? Like he he spaced out. <laughs> yeah, the uh, you you guys just saw your tour guides pretty much just jump on these vines. It almost seemed like the vines had automatically grappled onto their hooves and started zipping them down the vine toward the city. Over oh, what... that looks like fun. Yeah, that's one um, word for it. When in uh, well. When in whatever equivalent we have to Rome, All right. Swift will Swift will uh, engage in the adventure and grab onto a vine. You grab onto a vine, and your hooves are locked in. Sink, 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 and, and let's go, lat. 
Uh, let's go party. Yep, and you start zooming off. Uh, the so do your NPCs one by one. Pingling, duck, uh, nuts, all. Oh, okay. And duck is just going wee. Right, and it starts doing that thing. Electra, Fortuna, triple. Yes. Uh, I guess we'll follow. Yeah. Uh, just before Electra puts her hoof in there, um, yeah. she's gonna do a quick detect magic on the vines and see if anything comes up. You try to detect magic on the vines. Do not detect any magic. Interesting. Right. Yeah, incredibly interesting. Seeming as these seem to almost like the, those little tendrils kind of like uh, grow around. I mean, if you jump onto it, Electra, which I assume, yes. yeah, um, yeah. You'll, you could actually see like as it's zooming you along, it's almost like um, like like Doctor Octopus's like uh, like arms, pretty much, but like mm. miniature, it kind of like wraps around you with these this tight metal and keeps you kind of fast in there. Definitely it's like see articulated. Yes, definitely seems kind of dangerous. As you guys start zooming along this thing, I'm going to need uh, athletics, or sorry, acrobatics checks from all of you guys, keeping your balance. Well, nice. well, well, look what decided to I. show up. <laughs> Hi! I return. Well, Let we me just... show you how to do it. We just started Ooh. pretty much. Yeah. Is Sophie, it... <laughs> Sophie going to smash into something? Oh, 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 no. oh boy. <laughs> oh, this is going to be great. <laughs> I'm not here appointing this. Based, okay. <laughs> You know, it's funny because I was actually hoping exactly that would happen. That's so uh -oh. funny. Okay. Uh, very nice, Electra. Ophi, so pretty much um, we just started. We just got through the, the recap Ooh. pretty much. These these tribal-esque druidic sort of uh, steel, uh, clockworks um, or steel hearts were kind of leading party uh, up to the city of Tiktoka, which is this map that you see here. Along the way, they kind of hopped onto some vines, almost like rails. Uh, like imagine Jet Set Radio Future style, like they're just kind of around the thing, and and these yep. little vine tendrils pretty much lock them into place. So you'd be the last yeah. in this line as they start well, jumping meanly. on. Yeah, I wanna I wanna gotcha. grab Ophi and Tarzan with that roll. Oh, c incredible! Uh... All right, Ophi. Come on, last, we're off to adventure. <laughs> Whoa! Uh, Swift and Triple seem to have it definitely the best right now. Like you, you, you guys are good at keeping your balance, as it would turn out. Electra, you kind of had like you're doing this thing where like you're wiggling, you're wobbling. You're on one single like beam, pretty much. So it is just hard, hard to keep your balance, but you're not like falling over or anything. Honestly, those little tethers are probably helping to keep there. Madam Fortuna. <laughs> I forgot to pull down the windshield. I... Woo! There, there yep. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. And and immediately you're locked in, but you flip upside down like on the rails. And and you're kind of going over this ravine where you do see like there's trees that are popping up. Poof, 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 just in your face as you're going along the way. <laughs> and you just keep getting uh, flacked in the face, and 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 then suddenly you know like there, there's a few monkey wrenches that you see like like one of them kind of like uh, like leaps across like a tree right when you zoom by and it gets caught into your box. God. <laughs> It just starts like, and, and this this, monk, this little monkey wrench here has like a, a, a wrench, and you just freaked it the hell out, so it just starts screaming at you. Ah! <laughs> it starts like trying to hit you. In the face. Okay, okay, yeah, we're doing it. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, give me that attack roll. <laughs> Whose toes are those? <laughs> yep, yep, alright, give me your damage. That, that is definitely critical. Yeah, you explode the shit out of this monkey. Uh, <laughs> blows up. And uh, after... Okay. Yeah, that was a little bit too much. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I should take the power on this thing. <laughs> and uh, one by one, you guys start floating into this area right over here, this particular building, um, where all the vines seem to kind of go into there, right? You guys are kind of like dropped... Uh, Fortuna on the top of your box upside down. Everybody else is uh, more than free to just kind of awkwardly jump off. <laughs> and, uh, you ever seen a turtle being put uh, on its again, you know, upside down on its back? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what's happening with Fortuna. Uh, help. Yeah. Uh, so if we'll uh, tri uh, triple leap off with the vine and skid valiantly across to a stop with the extra weight he's carrying. Based? Yeah, they, uh, you, you get you get a polite 
you get a polite like like nodding from some of the others your tour guides pretty much that brought you here and um triple you know your hingeback turtle you had yes it's looking at fortuna who's on her back flailing around like a like a flipped turtle and looking like he's like wanting to go over there maybe to try to flip her back over hey fortuna take this <laughs> uh, toss it over you toss what? over you toss over the slut the the, the the small turtle this little tiny turtle right yes <sighs> And it just goes over to the underside of Fortuna's box, and you start seeing like it, it puts its head under there, and a little jack underneath its chin like starts pumping it up until Fortuna, you just kind of <laughs> fall back onto your side so you can get yourself back up. Oh shit! I almost have the pipe. This, this pipe thing knows how to repair pipe. stuff. <laughs> And then the turtle just kind of like looks slowly back to you, triple, like clacking its its little hinge back mouths. You can see all its gears like turning, all its gears on on the outside of its shell turning. Like what you had given it earlier, it's clearly fabricating something right now. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> all right, and, so what's it fabricating? Uh, you open it up. It seems to be fabricating uh, what seems to be more lock picks. Like, did it jump back over here or something? Well, yeah, like, it looked back towards you. And oh, okay, okay. maybe started walking back towards you a little bit, because you were the one that kind of fed it. Um, and then, yeah. I see, so it transmogrifies things as well. Yeah, you pretty much gave it those little clockwork leaves, if you will, little cog leaves that were on top of the trees. Yeah. And it's like re reforming that metal into something. Oh, so yeah. these are what they build. Uh, and one of the tribal folks kind of looks back, looks back down. Is somebody translating for triple at all, by the way? I guess this is the question, because remember, these guys kind of speak a different language. Um, Wait, again? Well, I'll, I'll you, make I funny think, faces at them. My <laughs> um, tongues has probably run out. Yes. Fortuna, I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah, Fortuna... Do they speak again? You, uh, they they seem to speak some kind of robotic language that you oddly enough can understand, as it would turn out. Um, Even though it's not in my language. Yeah, it's just kind of like, it's almost just like you know somebody uh, speaking in baby, and somehow you can one understand zero, it. Zero, 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 one, zero, <laughs> zero, 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 <laughs> binary. Exactly, and so like there's it's pretty much like the internet uh, dial-up zone phone towns like phone sounds pretty much <laughs> like between you two. <laughs> Um, you did and, your handshake, and now you speak the same language. Yeah, you're speaking AOL online. Um, <laughs> and they're kind of like looking at uh, the, the turtle that is uh, with Triple right over here. A young warrior. Clearly his familiar has found him already. That's what they say. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We've got a native initiation here. <laughs> We will have to bring him to the arena at some point, if he is familiar. My toe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that in character? Or out of... Yeah. Both. <laughs> Thump. My God. All right, and then, yeah, they continue uh, guiding, uh, guiding you guys, uh, kind of like around. It is there in the control center, the central processing unit, that. Ticklock resides. They start kind of guiding you that way. Wow. Now, as you guys kind of start going through here, I change the ambiance. Let's see. Where are we, uh, where are we at? Let's close that one. We do. Aha! Uh -huh. Perfect. You guys actually start seeing that there's, like, a lot of other like mix of steel hearts and clockworks that are you guys kind of first go through this marketing district more or less what seems to be on sale uh seems to be like uh like different merchants displaying intricate clockwork items fresh oils for lubrication unique little trinkets that represent the tiktok of culture uh you see what seems to be craftsmen at work that are kind of these artisans that uh, you know, either seem to be working on various little projects of their own, or funnily enough, fixing up animals. Um, just about every adult that you see in this city looking around, you do see almost, you know, like, uh, they, they have a, an animal that seems to be following them around. 
be it one of those monkey wrenches, be it a bird, be it something like that. All the adults seem to have one. Even some of the children, who seem a little bit older than most, seem to be playing around with almost a smaller version of them, like like an adolescent animal of their own, or tinkering with one uh, that you know might be offline at, for for one moment. Then they flip a gear, and then you know it comes back online. And then they start running around each other and that kind of thing again. The uh, people who are kind of guiding you into this city uh, smile upon them, maybe ruffle one or two of their, their little heads as they, they run by. It is a lively city. And by the looks of it, and they kind of like look around, they're, they're, you guys are getting some stares, particularly at Fortuna. Um, Hi. Yeah, and you know, like... Oh, they seem peaceful, at least for now. Yeah. They, they see Fortuna, and some of them kind of like clutch to their, their loved ones or whatever, or pull their, their children closer. Some of them start to like kneel down in prayer. Some of them um, may like notice Fortuna, but then shift their attention toward ye organics, you, uh, who have no clockworks. A couple of them kind of like pointing pointing that out. And uh, Fortuna, with your, with your language understanding here, you kind of glean some words. Is that the gods is uh, the gods is familiar? Wow, I did not know the gods can create organics too. Like they seem to be uh, seem to think that your entourage here with Fortuna is is created by her or something. Oh, they're not organics. Don't worry about it. They have all the stuff inside. Oh. New meat skin. New meat skin. The top of the line. Yeah, and the moment you start talking, like a few of those ones who might have been muttering, like they straighten up and then they go to a bow, you know, like they're like, oh, oh she's addressing me, you know, like that kind of thing. As you guys get into this, <laughs> and uh, as you guys get into this uh, big central transformer, as it were, um, the guards kind of like pull up these these giant halberds like allowing the doors to open wherein you see this huge staircase leading up to what seems to be very, I guess to us, Mayan looking uh, throne. Though it's not like one that you'd necessarily sit on per se, it just, nobody's sitting in it. All you can definitely tell is that the place where you would sit is spherical. <laughs> like. That's does it got connectors and shit? It does. It kind of has these, like, uh, a lot more of these, like, vines, vine wires kind of connecting and clipping into it. You definitely hear, like, a... Like, you know, different zappings coming from, like, the ceiling or different conduits. Uh, circuitry aligning the walls seems to, like, outline in blue electricity various murals and hieroglyphs uh, that seem to have been, like, not so much carved into the walls, but inscribed them with inscribed into them with circuitry, um, and and that's where you see a number of things. You see you see representation upon representation of some creature, some pony that looks much like Fortuna, and above most of these, definitely a symbol of iconography that you see more than most. You see what seems to be this symbol here. Like a light bulb. A light bulb. It must have had an idea. My turban. Yeah. Uh, say that again, Fortuna. What? Say that again, Fortuna. That looks like, that looks like the thing on my turban. Yeah, you guys look at Fortuna. Hi, it does that little oh. emblem. So it does. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Need a second look at Fortuna here. I know you guys already know, but there you go. It does indeed look like oh, the thing well. on my turban. Sort of, yeah. I wonder if it has any relation to Crucible. Well, hmm. I would think so. Now, um, like I said, nobody's sitting in that big rounded area or anything. Um, but after a few moments, you almost hear what seems to be a rolling. That's when you see this. That Clock ball board. must be the uh, the chief, I assume. Yeah, they all start bowing like the moment that they they like you know getting on one knee sort of thing, right? Uh, the moment that they start hearing the the rolling, and you guys see this large sized creature, certainly without four legs, certainly just rolling about. 
um, roll up from the right side around the edge of the stairs to you guys, and they they kind of like a blink. Ah, welcome travelers from afar. The gears of destiny have brought you to the heart of Tiktoka. What stories do you carry with you? No. Uh, take your pick. We've got dragon slaying stories. We've got crystal ball stories. We've got desert stories. We've got uh, fey leaf haunted house stories. Ah, quite the tales, quite the tales. I would be more interested in perhaps the story that led you to speaking with, and he looks toward Fortuna, our god. Now, most notably, I should Wait. point out, this guy isn't speaking machine language. He's speaking yeah, in silver. Yeah, I was about to ask. Yeah. <laughs> uh, such a wise, uh, a wise leader should know how to communicate with those around him, outside of their tribe, of course. Um, well, that is a desert story, in fact. Uh, and it precedes the dragon slaying story. We, we encountered this one in, or on the way up to Wati. Um, we found her, did we find her in that little hideout? Right, yeah. we found her in that little hideaway. Yeah, a refuge. So long to actually... I was trying to reach you guys for so long and you guys kept going the other way. Yes, well, we uh, dug her up out of a uh, safe space, and we brought, uh, we joined forces together under uh, mutual guidance to up towards Wati, where we vanquished a tyrannous red adult dragon. Truly, our god brings good tidings and blessings among those who she meets. And he kind of nods, gives a little bow toward your entourage here. I mean, being the emperor, that's kind of a big deal, it seems, to a lot of these people, right? Um, they kind of give, like, a like a, a big bow. It kind of goes yeah. up. Yeah, Lecture uh, will bow back. I apologize for being so rude. My name is Ticklock. He, uh, you know, distends... He, he kind of, like, distends, like, a hoof. He, he has hooves up on his upper kind of torso but like i said he kind of maneuvers by this giant ball that just seems to encompass where his belly is yeah. is an uh honor to meet you my name is swift sail you'll uh yeah come come and he uh turns around and he starts rolling back to where he came he came for the throne room is no place for idle discussion. I'm sure you would like to sit down and rest. And I have already been told that the gods were among us. So we have prepared a feast for you. Well, oh, I'm way here. Oh boy. I heard, I heard about something like oil. Well, sorry, Triple, what were you going to say? I heard you guys uh, had something called the Sea Engine. Could I ask what your take is on that? Ah, uh, this Sea Engine. He kind of, like, thinks for a minute. I am not aware of an engine of the sea. How about Anakini Kai? And he blinks. You speak our tongue. Uh, I guess I do a little. Ah. Perhaps there is uh, more to discuss after all. And he kind of, all will be explained. Come so they know about this. You will be... On yeah, they know about this. You will be on my left side. He says, like, looking at you, Triple. I like you. <laughs> like, kind of gives you a pat on the back, you know. Thump. <laughs> I only wish to add one more thing, sir. Um, see, uh, if I get, sorry, I need to make... The, I'm gonna, I need to be better. I need to make notes. Repeat his name. Ticklock. Uh, and I can Tick. actually, yep, I can spell that out in the uh, chat too. It's just T I K. Chief of. Ticklock. Ticklock. Chief. Okay. And um, Chief Ticklock. Uh, we, uh, well, we appreciate the hospitality. We are in a little bit of a race. Um, 
we have heard of uh, a King Cog in the area. Ah, uh, and he smiles almost like happily at that. King Cog, our protector, is more than just clockwork in the area. I'm sure you know. He is the embodiment of our spirit and our unity. When he roams, it's the heart of Tiktok walking the lands. Let me put it this way. If uh, Anakini Kai was at risk of coming back to life, what would your opinion of that be? I would wonder who the new tribe is. Oh, tribe? Oh, yes. And he kind of nods. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he kind of... This is where he gestures up, like, uh, to one of the, the giant, uh, like, hieroglyphic, uh, like, electric art pieces that's pretty much on the wall here. And and you you actually see something. Um, is, is, I guess he, he kind of describes it to you, right? It is there that the story of Enikini Kai is told. There. Right in the middle. See her there. You see this, like, giant snake creature that terrifies people pretty much right over there. Our warriors fought hard for many days. And you see... Just a number of warriors, and a number of warriors that you certainly can see the depictions of. You see what seems to be a large griffin. You see what seems to be a ravenesque hippogriff, a sphinx, the original banner mans, right, in hieroglyph yeah. forms, right. Do any of these uh, warriors look like they are mechanical? They do not, but they definitely do give them headdresses and garbs and that kind of thing, right? Clearly, mm -hmm. something that might have been missed in interpretation, and they kind of like gesture up there. Uh, after 70 days of long, hard battle, the one you speak of, Enakini Kai, was destroyed. And then he gestures over to the next piece, and then, you know, the mural-esque, where it shows Enakini Kai breaking up into various parts. You see what seems to be, uh, like, like four different sections uh, of things that kind of divide even further to other parts of murals and that kind of thing. And then one particular one which has like a key. Each part went to a different part of the forest where tribes had surfaced and the key was forever lost. Okay, that's good. Yeah. He, mm. kind, of, <laughs> he kind of like nods. That is the tale of the one you speak. And as he kind of like opens up the door, right? Oh yeah, they got people making a feast. There's a lot of gears on the table. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, it's an organic <laughs> feast. Luke's nice. just going to just uh, whisper to the party. So, did he just imply that they have a piece of Anakini Kai here? I think, okay, look, look here. This is actually great for us because it means that uh, whatever share is, is, is going to Golden Port, he's not going to find any. Well, that's a good question. Swift thinks it's good enough. He's just going to outright ask. Uh, Chief Ticklock, do you mean to say you have a piece here then? We do not control the pieces of the ancient divine beasts, though they do protect us. And he kind of Not like, control, but is it protecting you? Is its presence in TikToka? Its presence resides with TikToka in the form of our guardian, King Kog. So, mm. oh. King Kog is a part of uh, the young, younger Akanda Kirikai. That's what. I believe that's the implication, yeah. 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 And he, he kind of he kind of chuckles at the little question for Fortuna. I see our god is testing our knowledge. Well, I do hope it was up to your standard, but yes. <clears throat> um, just a quick clarification out of character from last session. What was the god that we talked to on the fax machine's name? Did we ever get their name? He did not. Interesting. Because they wanted King Cog dead, right? No, they were they were beating no. drums and said that they were doing it to appease King Cog. Uh, I remember. Was, yeah, that was Opie's yeah. interpretation of it. Yeah, because like there was something about King Cog being given organics as sacrifice, and uh, okay, so King Cog is 
not so much for the whole jungle, but specifically for the Tiktaka tribe. Mm -hmm. Protector, it seems. Yeah. And I wow. uh, so then because I remember also the god talked about neighboring tribes and it being difficult to get things to sacrifice because uh, of that. They had mentioned that it's like where your friends had gone off to and they say your friends where Babbage and Cher had kind of yoked their train out to okay. was into a different tribe's territory and they weren't going to so willingly go into that territory because of their guardian that's what they told you because of that tribe's guardian yes a different one from King Cog yes think about this for a second then this, this actually went great for us think about it the uh, sea engine is split into different parts that means that uh, uh, they're gonna have to work a lot to actually put it back together. I don't think any of them are actual inventors. So they're gonna have a hard time actually putting that thing back together. Well, even if they were to get everything back together, it doesn't sound like they're gonna be able to get them working without the key, which is forever lost. I mean, they, they have the Don't key. they have the key? Yeah, they, they do have the key, but they would need to reassemble the thing yeah, they, they got it from the bank. Well, I know Cher has as long as she wants, so we should still do something about that. What I'm thinking is that we might have some more time. Hopefully. And sitting down one by one, he kind of rolls into like a little like circular divot in the floor, less so than a chair, right? And, and you guys are each kind of given this plate of various... I mean, like, if you squinted your eyes, right, you know... If you squinted your eyes really tight, it would look like a very, very wonderfully prepared fruit salad of sorts with all these various things around it. But it's all made from, like, the gear-ass clockwork equivalents of, of what that stuff might be, right? Um, yeah. And <laughs> uh, this, oh. is all, this is all kind of served up to you guys. Oh, my me. Oh, this is so great. <laughs> I was tired of actually eating organic food. <laughs> and uh I stick in. You um you will forgive me, Chief uh Tick Lock. You will forgive me and my allies. Uh obviously we are organics and the uh, uh, uh both the elbow swift. <laughs> uh, that uh, she uh, that, that Fortuna told him that we are not organics. Uh, I, I, okay. I told, no, I, I I told it to some of the guys that we are not organics, that, right? No, to well, some of the peasants, not the main chief guy. I don't think oh, okay. we're fooling. I don't think we're fooling Ticklock here. Yeah. I'm not going to disrespect him. He's been polite to us. Um. So. To keep up with the politeness, I hope you see no disrespect that this does not digest through our systems. Ah, you are not a fan of oil from the springs atop the tallest mountain in the region? Uh, for creatures like myself and the rest of us, they it does not go through our systems the same way as it does yours. But you will surely go hungry. Is there anything we can do to help? Um, I, might, I, I might try to explain the situation to them. Okay, Ted, look at those guys, right? Look at those guys. Uh, look, look how squishy they are. If they try to eat one of these metal things, they're... They will literally break apart. Their jaws are not strong enough. So fragile. What? Yeah. I... I was... Squishy fragile, those are poor words. There's fragility I can and hear you. It, uh, is, it is understandable. It is understandable. No offense, man. He says, like, shaking okay. his head. Lecture's gonna oh, lean over to Swift after he's flustering. Looks like he wasn't wrong about us being fragile. <laughs> <laughs> what the... What the... <laughs> Do you want to try and eat this light bulb then? I eat this light bulb. Give me that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. I'm not. I'm not gonna bite into this light bulb. No. <laughs> no. No. You gotta bite on it now. I'm not gonna eat this light bulb. It's fear factor. You just grabbed it. 
Nuts just kind of like looks at you, swipe that that light bulb. Uh, someone is about to have a bright idea. <laughs> like, yeah, looks looks like a light meal to me. Hey, you should put that right uh, here. And like Nuts goes over to you, Swift. Why and, didn't like, I think of that one? Turns to the back of his head where you saw that like missing unit and the thing, and he's like, Yeah, screw, screw it in there. There you go, for my pal. Yeah, I'm gonna like, put it inside Nuts. You put it inside Nuts. You screw it in the thing. Ding. Oh, I just got an idea. Pray tell. Nah, I was just kidding. I didn't actually get an idea, but that would have been funny, All wouldn't right. it? <laughs> it would have been. Pat, pat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the um, the inventor guy that you guys brought along, this commoner, is just like, I, yes. I, I, I say, I, Mr. Ticklock, right? Like he's gonna raise his hand. Uh, mm, he kind of nods. Mm -hmm. I, oh, you should introduce yourself first. Oh, I am Sir Topham Hattam. And he gives a big old bow. It is good to meet you, Mr. Topham Atom. Right? Like, you know, like he kind of, uh, kind of nods his way. I, I just want to say, your society here looks incredible, he says. Ah, uh, it has been many, many millennia. Well, dare I say, centuries of building and cultivating our culture here. We are glad to have you as part of it. And finally being able to meet the face of our god is a welcome surprise. Um, kind of crunches on like a little leaf. That's where you see like um, one of them, um, like one of like the I guess the servants that's kind of around the little castle, comes around with they they have like two hingeback turtles, right? They come over here uh, and present to you Fortuna seasoning, <laughs> you know, like and they open up the hingeback turtles and they have like the clockwork equivalent to salt and pepper in each one of the <laughs> these little mm. hingeback turtles that just seem to be yeah. The what? Deuterium. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> I heard deuterium. <laughs> Give me some abyssum powder right there, sir. Thank you. There you are. You know, they, they kind of like hand you a thing. <laughs> so. Okay. Oh, so. Hmm. Interesting. You seem to have Out many of... questions, Mr. Sale. Hmm. Interesting. I'm kind of looking at the party now. I guess if the engine is broke up, that's one thing, but there's very much the possibility that they can brute force. They are strong, and they could try to brute force. Um, and it doesn't matter they don't have an inventor class. Babbage is crafty. We know that. Yeah. I'm sure I mean, if he had the pieces, he could stitch the, the thing back together. But then I, I'm I curious think... what's locked away in Goldenport. Know about that. Uh, what is it? What is locked away? We've heard that the sea engine was locked away in Goldenport, but now it's broken up in the forest. This one you call Enakini Kai says the chief, like answering the question in the best way the chief knows how. Right? Uh, broke from a uh, broke away from the Holy Land. It was warriors from there that had to chase them down and banish them to the forest with us mortals. Oh, is that what happened after the events of that last campaign? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't know, because, like, out of character, I know that. That's just so how... I'm trying to figure... The, 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 the chief was just describing his tale of events. They've already told you that the Golden Port is apparently their holy land. They mentioned that last session. Yes, mm -hmm. and yeah. it got away from the holy land. Mm -hmm. It got, got out of the holy land. And Akini Kai escaped, and you know this from Moon Planner's historical recollections of things, right? Uh, it got out when they. Um, that was the, the original Banner Mains, right? Yep. And then. The but we've U heard that it no. was it's sealed in Golden Port. That's maybe what you guys have heard. Is it under or something? Maybe it's, maybe it's a sigh up. You know, the 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 uh, yeah. was everybody into thinking that it was the, in Golden Port. Sealed yeah. in Golden Port for a thousand years run, runs off the tongue better than sealed near. Golden port under a forest for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I don't, I don't, th I do not think that Babbage and Care would be able to put that thing back together. Think about it. That was built by probably the greatest inventor of all time. It's just not something that can catch up with the with blue and the paint, you know. If he, if he's the greatest inventor of all time, wouldn't he make his machines easy to understand and work? No. 
base. If he's the greatest inventor of all time, how come there isn't a number two? Why would you why would you even make your machines understandable by everybody? Especially a big 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 machine like that one. Well, let me rephrase. If he's making his machines to last, and his machine was broken, wouldn't it make sense to have some sort of self repair mechanism? Yeah. Essentially Probably. you get everything all together and just I, poof. I guess, but the banner made did probably did a really good job at uh, destroying that thing. So, and I am but, assuming that uh, that, that uh, Crucible one of, was one of the people who actually, uh, you know, trying to stop it. I'm That's more than less plain devil's advocate here, but I mean, if it's so impossible for Cher and Babbage to get this back together, why are we worried at all? Why are we even here? I they see a little way. They, they I can probably. I think it's probably likely that they're gonna they have the means of reactivating this if they're gonna be here at all. We ha at least have to assume that. Well, I, assume that I'm right there with her. I'm not gonna just leave and assume and take the chance that they're not gonna reactivate it. Of of course they're going to try to reactivate it, but what I'm saying is that we still have some time because. Uh, I don't think they expected this forest just as much as we did, you know? Yes, maybe it's not such an immediate race to Goldenport I mean, as we they, thought. They were probably expecting that this thing was in Goldenport, just like us. They don't. No. They probably don't even know that, uh, you know, they probably don't even realize yet that the thing is broken into different pieces. Well, you, that's what I was about to say. You know what I think? I think if they've written themselves into a neighboring tribe, Sooner or later, they will figure it out. And when they do, they're going to come looking for all the Guardians, King Cog included. Exactly. So we need, to make a, we need to make a plan that's either going to stop them or permanently destroy all these parts. I feel like the second one is very much not okay. We won't get a thumbs up from the tribe. We're going to... I was thinking of waiting for them to show up and getting the jump on them. You know, while we wait, I may have uh, something. I do, you know. I do agree. I think that stopping them is going to be a lot easier because if it were so easy to destroy these things, they would have. The original banner mains would have done that. Yeah. And we don't even need to fully beat them. What we need, because we have the world's greatest thief with us here, if we can just get them in another scrap and he can steal the key back off of them, that's yeah. all we need. If, if that opportunity arises, I'm all for it, but I think ideally we deal with them permanently, especially with what we know of what Cher's trying to do now. So oh, either I way, agree. we're going to go fight them. I think priority one is getting the key and then trying to end them in the process, but don't you know, worry. I'm going to take the key of, first anyways. Instead of fighting them, why don't we just take the easier route, wait for them to sleep, and then we just kill them while they sleep? We... Ophie's standing in the corner spinning these uh, three-pronged disc-looking things. <laughs> these things are really cool, guys. <laughs> <laughs> three-pronged disc-looking things? Yeah. <laughs> What? They, they seem to spin on bearings. A gadget spinner. They, 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 they're oh, fidgeting no. around a little ah, bit. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You spin it. I bet you I can make it go really fast. You actually, magic. you actually see these little, like, electrical things, like, uh, these little electrical sparks around the outside, like, zapping as it does so. Thank you for your contribution, he says, like, over to you, uh, Ophie. Anytime. That's what I'm here for. Well, Ophie, you're kind of, like, you kind of look maybe, like, out, like, a, a side door or something. You do see that that is some of the things that some of the servants are doing occasionally, and then they plug their little spinner, if you will, into the wall, and it seems to charge a little bit of the wall. Uh, That's a neat little widget. Oh, so you charge them? Yeah. <laughs> charge their fidget spinners. <laughs> <laughs> the okay, children so love what? them. I may have an idea, actually, since uh, Fortuna has actually got to look for her, her fucking infinite fucking box somewhere in one of the uh, fucking uh, cupboards or whatever is out of it. Uh, mm -hmm. 
Never realized I had these, but uh, here, official crucible MREs. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> right, right here for, for ah. you know for the party, since the, 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 so they don't have to eat fucking ears and shit. Ah, yeah, you got some uh, MREs from for sure. Nice. Yeah. Uh, these would. What's the date of this thing? It looks like they're. How long ago was the key engine again? <laughs> it was like three or four hundred years ago. Yeah. Uh, they're the. They're three hundred years old. I don't know if they're still good, but uh, these. these uh, Give me the Twinkie. Alive. You, uh, yeah, open it up. You guys open your various MREs, and there's actually a commemorative little Banner Mains trading card in, in each one. Mm. Who yeah. did I get? Uh, you got... Uh, give me a 1d6. <laughs> Alright, let me check this. Do -do -do. You got... Crucible. Oh, oh it's dead. How apropos. Yeah. Do you have a picture of him somewhere? I do. Also, yeah, post a picture of him. It is actually his. Uh, yeah, let me grab it. Um, do 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 do. It's his. It's his. Like non. -po it's his non. Does non clockwork form because obviously he wasn't cursed around this time yet. Yeah. Um. So. Is this like the Harry Potter cards. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like the Harry, they're sort of maybe. Uh, well, they don't have magic. Yeah, they're not magical. Yeah, but they're, um, yeah, but they're lenticular, you know. Yeah, like you, know, you get a foil. He shows this guy. I need more pictures of Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's the lad. Mm. No, Any... Yeah, I'm anybody gonna... else is free to roll their D6 if you want to see your commemorative card. Uh, let's see, Fortuna, you get never. You got a an image of Nevermore. Uh, more Nevermores. Yeah, more. I got a Nevermore too. Uh, how do I roll as my own name instead of the party? You have to click your token. We need tokens, but... yeah. But yeah. how did how did Fortuna do it? I don't think she ever clicked that party token. If you yeah, if so you unclick, remembering her. If you unclick off of oh, the token on okay. the map, yeah. It'll default, well, I rolled yeah. I rolled the six. Gotcha. Six would get you da, 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 rhyme, who I don't have yet, but um. You get the uh, legendary snowy griffin fighter of the group, the big one, the big guy. Hmm. Um, and uh, he's the strong, silent type with uh, the sword named Permafrost. Those who rolled five, you get this guy, uh, Nevermore, with the raven. Hmm. Walk Don't the raven. Me or my son ever again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's kind of like looking over. Interesting. <laughs> He's like, you know, the sheep is just like <laughs> blinking. You gods have a funny way of playing games. <laughs> He's just like looking at your cards with amusement. He doesn't really understand it, but he doesn't seem like he needs to. He's just kind of like, that's amusing. Like, you guys. Yeah, exactly. Different. This isn't a game, it's serious business. It's worth <laughs> a lot. These probably are. Oh, oh yeah. We should save these for Moon Planter. <laughs> is it, uh. Yeah, he and Stocks would love this. Is it these look similar in designs to, um. This? And he actually, like, rolls up. He rolls out. Give me one moment. And, uh. Holographic few... Charizard! Uh, I thought he was about to say, give me 1d20. A few mm -hmm. moments later, he comes back with what seems to be kind of like a, a fairly tarnished, uh. Golden commemorative bobblehead of what seems to be a uh, semitone. Damn. <laughs> Where'd you get this? It's a it, fanny pop. It was found in deep into the forest, though no one is quite sure why or where it did come from. It certainly does not represent any of our known gods. Therefore, it was thrown in the back. And he smiles. <laughs> Wait, is this uh, solid gold? Is semitone? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's just a little commemorative bobble, bobblehead of semitone with some like it's it's almost just like it's like got like this goldesk goldesk paint on it. It's definitely not oh, okay. made of gold. It's made of some kind of plastic, and you wiggle it around. <laughs> but but like um, the paint wasn't like chipped off or anything. It actually looks in pretty good condition. Yes, these are uh, warriors of ages ago for. Uh... 
our kind. Ah, did they? And he looks at the bobblehead, you know, and he bobbles his head. A lot? Ah. Uh, <laughs> only when not I get quite, hit. Yeah, not quite that much. <laughs> Interesting. I have seen fair a few heads bobble in my time. I prefer yeah. to keep mine unbobbled. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is most fortuitous news. I'm sure that the people would love to still meet their god at the very least. And you are just in time for the uh, uh, our celebration, the time celebration itself, where we, well, I'm not sure if you've noticed. I'm sure you know, he says once again, addressing uh, the god herself, Fortuna. The deep thrums are back through the jungle. Everything is once again in alignment in time for our celebration. Many foods, many tales to be told. The time celebration is not just a dance or a gathering. It is the heartbeat of our people, a connection to the cycles of the past and in hopes to our future. Your presence might just be the dawn of a new cycle for us. We'd be honored to take place. Wonderful. I'm sure connecting with our people may be able to answer some of the questions that Swift, you have. <laughs> I not quite done with the questions either, but um, and I am happy to connect and get to know your town with the information we've been given. Mm -hmm. whoa, whoa, whoa! So go ahead, go finish. Um, do you have? We saw the fax machine. Is that a way, or do you have any other way of communicating with the other tribes? We do not aim to communicate with the other tribes. Their guardians will not allow it, and... And he kind of, like, does, like, a slow... Like, he closes his eyes a little bit. I and my sister personally deem them somewhat heretical. Okay. Yes. Um... Hmm. Speaking of... Whoa. And he, he kind of claps. If you wish to, uh, learn more about... Our traditions, and he he looks over. Uh, Tikana, he calls out, and a uh, it seems to be a clockwork pony comes out of the side in wonderful robes. Um, actual clockwork, or like an actual clockwork, clockwork pony, uh, like comes out the side uh, a little a little bit, and he calls forth this one named Tikana. Yes. Our god wishes, perhaps, to ask a few questions of you, and you are our head priestess. Takana kind of looks over. It is an honor, and she gives a little, like, a, a bow. She kind of crosses her hose a little bit, lowers her headdress, like, lifts up. She only looks to be about in her, like, I guess in terms of pony ages, right? Uh, maybe, like, mid-twenties? Uh, like about there. Certainly doesn't look as old and wizened as the big ball of a pony rolling around. But according to him, this is her sister. Or this is his, oh. his uh, this is his sister. Wow. Hey, hang on a second. How, how old is the uh, top pick guy? Tick. You haven't asked. Lock. Yeah, tick lock. Well, how old does he look? Old. Yeah. yeah. He'd, look, old he, he, he'd be looking like about in his 40s. And he is... From what we can tell, also, or is he a Steelheart? No, oh, he's a Steelheart. Definitely a Steelheart. Yeah, he's rolling because, like, he doesn't have ho he doesn't have hooves. He looks a lot more. Oh, right, 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 right. The shape is too wacky to be a clockwork. Right. But he's a. Uh, but they're brother and sister. Yep. I, a, bi I, a, a a big delimiter between Clockworks and Steelheart is, as uh, Fortuna said, yeah, like it's it's their shape. Like Fortuna's in a box. He's in a ball. You know. <laughs> um. Typically, clockworks are only ever in pony form because, you know, it's just um, they they have to turn back into a pony once once per year. So, like, uh, yeah, I just uh, this is just you know if they don't if they look kind of weird, they're kind of pony shaped but not really that clockwork. They're pony fully pony shaped or with the mechanical components that mm -hmm. clockwork. Yeah, I'm getting. 
Uh, she actually goes over toward you, Triple. I have see, I see you have found yourself a guardian of your own. And, like, gives your hinge back turtle a little bit of a, a pet. turtle? Yeah. Yeah. Are you um, of age? Yes. Ah. For, I think, everything now. <laughs> what have you named him? <laughs> um, hmm. I'm trying to think of a good one. Uh, I'm going to call him Hunter. Ah, Hunter. A fitting name for a turtle. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Perfect. Yes. At, uh, she as she kind of like lightly pets the back. She actually lightly um, reveals his uh, his control panel effectively. Ah, they do have him set on repeat. You seem I to need a lot of how, these. How similar the name is to Gunter. <laughs> <laughs> that I part just of... realized that. That's yeah. part of it, yeah. Gun you should probably see Gunter on the other side of the table, like, looking up at you, Triple. Like, he's, like, squinting his eyes. At the yeah, doing the thing where he's looking around the room <laughs> yeah. and trying to find something. He sees Gunter, and then he sees a giant H somewhere in the trees. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, and she kind of reveals this little control panel on here. And you see you have him set to repeat. Ah, you need a lot of these, um... And she kind of opens up the hinge back a little bit. Uh, lock picks. Yeah, he makes he makes new ones for me. I never have to buy one again. Ah, he does more than that. I'm sure you know. Let's see what else he can make. Um, can he potentially make? Uh, think. if and she kind of closes the uh, the hinge backs back a little bit. If he uh. If you coax him into doing it, I'm sure he can make you a myriad of things with this panel right here. And she kind of like shows you the turtle's control panel here. Pretty much, uh, yeah. the the hingeback turtle can can craft you little mundane items like this up to level like an item level two, just so long as you give it food oh. and you could you you could change it. All right, let me take a look. <laughs> Neat little engines if you will <laughs> you have two <laughs> yeah and uh you, you could go do other things I'm yeah yeah for what i want to make she smiled Jimmy, you had questions for the priestess right yeah she's here ask away fortuna god what sorry <laughs> what? Uh, priestess is here if you had questions i i i i tell a speak uh oh Oh, let me fix your sleep mode for you. No, 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 don't touch that. It will be, it, it will be okay. And she just kind of like, one little button on the back. Bloop. And she holds it for one, two, three seconds. And you just get this like, equivalent to like a little adrenaline burst to wake you the fuck up for a second. Uh, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> <laughs> Nod. <laughs> That was, that was the wrong, that was, that was the wrong button. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh, come on. <laughs> Thank yeah. goodness. Wait, it's not on the fucking soundboard. It's not on the, how do I fucking do this? I will turn it off. And she holds it for another three seconds. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, oh, that thing. I thought there was going to be another. <laughs> <laughs> I was like ready for it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to loop. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And she says, uh, oh, my apologies, my apologies. I figured you look... Uh, I, uh, I figured that my knowledge on well, your constructs may have served me well, but it turns out I have much to learn. And she, like, okay, uh, here. vows. I'm uh, going to put, I'm pulling out of uh, the, the fucking instruction manual from my, my box. It's, it's something like, a, hang on a second, where's your fucking Hang on a second, I gotta, gotta post something. Yeah, I'm pulling the instruction manual for to, to use in case she ever needs it. Ah. I'm just gonna, um, yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna post a picture. And so... Yeah, yeah, um, there you go. Nice. She so see this big ass book. I will be happy to study these. And she's like opening it and reading it. Runes. What language is this? 
Normal language? Normal. The language of the god. No, it's literally normal. I will transcribe this normal language of yours if it is your wish, god. How can you transcribe it if you don't know what, what it is? Very carefully. One might say it is for me to know and for the people to find out. Uh, <laughs> look, I, I, I will fax it to you in binary. Ah, very well. We will hope to see it in our printer. She smiles. It looks toward G Swift. Um, so you had some questions, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Well, my qu my last questions had been about um, <clears throat> communication with the other tribe. What if? Mm. Yes, communicate. I mean, communications with the other tribe. My main concern is that there are others who have veered off into a neighboring tribe, and they seek to. Uh, potentially cause harm to their guardian as well as ours, yours, King Cog. Uh, and he kind of blinks. If the other tribes this time to fall is upon them, let them fall. And he kind of gives a little bit of a shrug. It is destiny if they are to meet one that is to facilitate their demise. We have been trying to do so ourselves for years. What? Destroy the other tribe. They're heretical. Remember? Oh, I th I thought you meant like <laughs> I thought I meant like meet, they were. It was their goal to meet someone that would destroy themselves. No, no. They, they like they've. Uh, he's clearly not against the idea of this. Other, okay. Yeah, these other well, this other tribe falling. Like if that's a concern. <sighs> There is only um, one. There is only one particular tribe who continues to be a nuisance to all of us, and that is the Meknara tribes. And then, uh, that, Meknara. There it is. Yeah, Mek. Uh, okay. They are. Uh, they are the lost ones, the ones without guardians, but who seek to pillage our resources from those of us who do. They are, as you would say, barbaric. Speaking of barbarians... Yeah, where did we go? Uh, who? Ah, a friend of ours. She was, um... She got sucked up into your trap. A vent or something. A vent. She kind of, kind of blinks. Near the fax machine. I go. cannot say I know the inner workings of every clockwork thing on the land, though perhaps talking to the Hunter's Guild might give you a better clue, perhaps? He says, like, curious, uh, curious as to what you mean, especially when you bring up Ghost. I was not uh, aware that you had brought a spirit with us. It would be great to see her, too. Hmm. I mean, worst case scenario, she died, she's gonna regenerate in about a day or two right next to this. You're getting her sword, right? Uh, yeah, the um, the bastard sword. Yeah. 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 Worst case scenario, uh, uh, either she finds us or she's dead, and uh, she's gonna regenerate. Ah, uh, spirits do indeed work in mysterious ways, he says, and Tikana kind of um moves over toward uh, you, Electra. Edraconic Hello? one. Uh, I guess, yeah. Do you bring luck to our people or misfortune? I'd like to bring luck. Ah, wonderful! It was good tidings then that you have come at the time of the uh, at the uh, of the celebration. Good must come out of this, as per, uh, as foretold by the prophecies. I would. I'd, I'd be honored to bless your celebration with good luck. Wonderful. And she kind of like, uh, she kind of smiles. Hopefully, King Cog will enjoy our tribute. Okay, uh, what, what is your tribute? Mm-hmm. Uh, and she kind of blinks, looks around at all ye organics. 
I would assume one of you. Uh uh. Yep, see, that's uh, nope. what I thought. <laughs> nope, nope. I knew I interpreted that correctly. <laughs> okay, look. These guys, these guys are, uh, as your god, I'm telling you, these guys, uh, they are, uh, they're my private servants. They're not for sacrifice. You don't want to I'm sacrifice. Babbage. Yeah, the, the Babbage, that's the guy you want to sacrifice. Uh, they kind of like blink. <laughs> I will note down this babage, as you call him. And, uh, and if you want to sacrifice something, I have uh, this uh, and this. We could probably Frankenstein together a creature and then we could... Oh, these are wonderful. And she kind of goes over. We could do with these. Have you been collecting? I collect organs. <gasps> I knew our sacrifices went without, <laughs> like, uh, went somewhere, somewhere oh, good. That's where all yeah. the uh, grizzly yeah. growths come from. Huh? <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> I, I, I oh. told you guys. I told you guys. I collect these things for a reason. You guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, she's totally interested in the body parts. You want to use them to make a little idol to sacrifice? She seems to be happy really, with that. I'm yep. really glad I haven't been hit by that. <laughs> oh my goodness. But yeah, she kind of uh she kind of blinks. If you would stop by my temple, we can make a proper effigy. Hmm. Okay. And uh the chief I'll leave that to you, Fortuna. The uh, the chieftain kind of like looks to looks to you guys. In the meantime, it would be much uh, much appreciated if you would make your presence known among the people. I'm sure they are very curious about you. In the meantime, I will consider your words and perhaps try to think of a solution to your problem. Uh, Electra is going to ask a question and. If necessary, she will use, uh, uh, what's that feat called, uh, sorry, uh, shameless request. I guess it's not really a request, but yeah, she's going to fish for, she's going to fish for some information. Um, yeah, there's the, what, 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 it, what ability is that? Cause shameless request is very specific and mogs the shit out of me. So if it is shameless request, I, it does something different than just some of those other feats that I need to know. <laughs> okay, so I, I guess uh, she's going oh to... Uh, well, well, she's going to... She's going to... I'm just trying to think of a way to ask it in character. Um, it's shameless. Ask it. Yeah, just do say you, it. Okay. Do you, do you know if uh, any of the inhabitants are going to be offended by our organicness? Yeah. Uh, and let's see. Give me, give me, give me your diplomacy if you're if you're uh, thinking that you're gonna offend. Give me that diplomacy. I'll take. That's not even a shameless question. You just just a question, just I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that's just a question. Here's a private role. Yeah, or a blind role. No need to do blind. Kind of like shakes his head. Not at all. Not at all. In fact. And he kind of like stands up. Wear these, and he takes off like an earring from like each ear, uh, maybe like a necklace, like those kind of things, and gives them to each one of you guys. Royal symbols from the palace. They will not touch you. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Stay as long as you wish, and. When you are free to go, we will bring you to the highest mountain where you may ascend back up to the Holy Land. Ah, thank you. <laughs> and you guys are free to leave. Okay. So, in a powwow with the party, they don't care for the other tribes. There's no way they're going to want to communicate with the other tribes. We don't really have a way of knowing what's going on in the other tribes. But I still feel strongly about the idea that Cher and Babbage will eventually come for King Cog. They will, well, if they want to wake up, 
they want to wake up the sea, en sea engine, they're going to need to come here eventually. How about we spy on them? If we still have uh, spells left to use, I know we used a lot during that train scene and the fight with the steambacks. How about we go to sleep and then we spy on have we, uh... I don't think we really know where this King Cog is. I'd, I'd like to figure out... I'd like to know that King Cog, eh, King Cog is secure before mm. we go to sleep. I wouldn't want uh, to share making off with him while we're sleeping. Mm -hmm. I agree. Perhaps, you know, we can... You know, make ourselves known around the village like he asked, and then... We can ask him to show us King Cog. Right. I'm, sh I'm sure the villagers would know where he is. Well, they might be able to tell us, but they could be far off. Might not be able to take us. What about the chief? Wouldn't he know? He's the biggest guy. The big guy um, who makes all the rules. The question isn't who who knows and doesn't know. It's whether or not they would... I'd assume we'd ask the chief to take us or someone else, I guess, but... Also, before we do anything, uh, has Penguin got some frying left? Because the... I, I, I can do frying, but uh, I got too low of a level to do it on those guys. Uh, well, I don't know if I do, and then he looks at Gunter, who's, like, still staring daggers at Triple. Uh, might be able to shake one out of him, though. Out of Gunter? Yeah. Remember, he he could he could kind of use one of his levels of spells through Gunter, so he can't technically use that as a universalist. So, he has one left. We could, could we try on him? We'll probably try on him. Yes. All right, Merlon, where is where is he? Let's see, where's my banner means? Oh, uh, NPCs, they're there. Erlon, and let's just see his DC here. Ah, yes. A scrying one. Alright, that is DC 38. And uh, who are you guys wanting to scry on? Babbage or Cher? Ah, uh, shit, I forget which one of them is easier to do it on. Uh, it's probably going to be Babbage because Cher's, think... you know. Yeah. All Babbage. Right. On Babbage. That was just a will save. Unless she puts some kind of Damn enhancement it. on him. All right, and you see, um, you see Penguin. He's kind of like thinking, thinking, thinking. And uh, for a moment, it's like he's like trying to concentrate on getting to see Babbage, and then you hear Babbage's voice come out of Penguin's beak, and he just says, "Get out of my head! Get out of my head! Get out of my head!" And then Big Penguin comes back. And he's like, "Whoa, that was a little weird." <laughs> like, Tell him we've been trying to reach him about his, his about his warranty. <laughs> it's a little too late for that. Oh my goodness, I don't want to try again. To that try again. Oh, it's the last time I could do it today. Dang it. All right, fuck it. I'm gonna try and do it myself and see if this works. I, or he's gonna miss out on this unique opportunity. I, I gotta, I gotta try with my crystal. Hold on. Mm, hold on. Yeah, hold on. Mm. Let me see. Hold on. I... <laughs> he probably can't do that. What? Uh... Come on, can make I... a shameless request. Can I combine Bon Mott with uh, Sending? <laughs> I, don't... I think uh... that's specifically a spell. Well, I mean, if you can say it in 25 words or less... <laughs> oh some my spells God. through Sending, can't you? Huh? I think you can do some spells through sending, can't you? Well, I, I mean, there are some spells that had you sending as a base. I, I, I do don't that see kind why you thing. couldn't, because the line of effect thing. The linguistic. <laughs> we'll say we'll say yes for you say yes for now. That's kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is it is funny. What do are it, you trying do to it, do? It, do, it, do it. Uh, hold on, I'm writing it up. <laughs> Carefully I would say crafted. As long as it's not like. As strong a suggestion, since that's like literally a level nine spell. Swift is thinking up of the greatest twenty-five word bant you've ever heard. Don't think of it. Just make keep it simple as swords, you know. 
Your mama's so fat. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to keep messing with you until <laughs> you die. <laughs> That's the one I was thinking of. Uh, okay, I think that's enough. Let me see. Let's see. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Try to use that one already today, so I couldn't do that anyway. When, once you guys are done with it, I'm gonna also cast my own sending. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> PS. PSS. Or PPS. Uh, uh. Okay, there. Uh, mm. <laughs> you cast your sending. Uh, <laughs> Sim Savage, we know you got a lot. Maybe you got a lot of room in there to bring that small. No! Oh my got goodness. His ass. Oh, yes. Okay, versus his uh, Will's DC, right? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a critical success, actually. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Scry yeah, on him! A lot of room. Like, like, scry on him! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoever's scrying, scry on him because he immediately responds <laughs> to Swift with like a "Listen here, you little shit!" <laughs> like, like. I, who else I has scry? To, um, My uh, dad was in the Aerolonian Navy, and I don't need any. Scry. You know, like, the <laughs> Fortuna, I scry. Yeah, I'm scrying. First, I sent that sending to uh, right, right there. See that message? <laughs> All right, I'm trying. Yes, crystal ball. Come on, let's keep this. Okay, practice. so that means he gets a minus three. three yeah. Ooh. All right, you scry. Okay. He gets a will save. Where's the will save? Weepy shit, weepy shit, weepy shit. It's pretty huge. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Here, luck. Nice. I thought we wanted oh, that's him. I thought Sorry. we wanted shit. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I thought it was Fortuna for some reason. Yet. That's 25. Oh my. That's fucking 25. <laughs> He's out of range anyways. Phase. Damn. Oh, so, oh my goodness. The spell looks sees in the <laughs> and the eye follows the target if it moves traveling up to 60 feet. So this just follows him around too. It's not even just in <laughs> one place. Uh, <laughs> and, and 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 you scry into what seems to be um well, it seems to be Babbage and Cher. They're also in in what seems to be like this this temple. I actually have I have different VGM for this temple. Don't can that. sustain it for ten minutes and fall on for ten minutes. That's really good. Yeah. yeah. And um, like they're clearly in some kind of temple. There's a singular phone on an altar in this temple, and Babbage is fucking seething. Can you believe that guy? That stupid blue. I'm gonna kick his ass. And he's like, like his hooves are up in the air, right? Like you know, he's he's animating. And and Cher is just like, Babbage, shut up! You're going to get us caught. I don't care. I don't wanna. I don't wanna ever hear him in my head again. You know, next time I see him, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. And he kind of thinks for a little bit. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna insult his mother. <laughs> he points to Cher, right? <laughs> oh yes, that will show him. That will show him. Says Cher. And then you guys start hearing like. A yelling, a familiar voice of Ord saying, Let me out, let me out, go for it, Adon. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yo, what the fuck? Hey! I'm so stuck in the pipes. Quiet! And he actually takes out a little bottle that he seems to be holding Ord and shakes it. Oh, wait, no, but this is not a pipe. <laughs> it's not a pipe, no, no, no. You're gonna stay with us, okay? You're our bargaining chip. <laughs> Bottle starts going red. <laughs> hey, calm Great. it down. Calm it down. Yeah, like it, he, he shakes it again. Nah, this one's a feisty. Ow, shit! I gotta put it in my back in my bag. It's right. It's getting hot. Fuck Ugh. up. Fuck up. Get, get me out of here. Yeah, put puts a word back into his little bag of holding. So, so, so what are we gonna? So what are we gonna do with her again? And and Cher looks like she's about to answer. She kind of opens her mouth, and then there's like somebody that you is heard coming down a hallway elsewhere, and and Cher goes to hide, like she like hides somewhere. Get back in your disguise, and um, 
Right? And 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 Babbage very quickly shifts to some disguised, uh, to some disguise where he himself starts to look like a priest. Um, and uh, the the people who come down the hall simply say like, Gronokan, is our ritual ready? And he kind of like looks back. <clears throat> yes, yes, uh, it is um. Uh, uh, complete, yes, yeah. He clearly looks a little out of his element, right? But they, they, these guys clearly don't really seem to catch on too well. Wonderful, Chronocon. This celebration will surely be one for the ages. Seems like the other tribe over there seem to have a very similar celebration going on at this very same time too. They have this brief conversation back and forth, which seems to imply a couple things. One. The priest that Babbage is currently impersonating seems to be kind of a big deal. Two, they seem to very much trust to this impersonation of Babbage. And thing three, uh, they clearly need some kind of spirit for it. Well, shit. <laughs> and after they depart, Cher comes back out of, you know, her little hiding hole, her little hiding space, right? Yeah, that was awkward. Maybe these tribals can be useful after all. Maybe we can slow down those banner mains. I'm sure that they're looking for us. They've already tried to scry on you and me a couple times. And, uh, Babbage just kind of, like, looks over, you know, drops to the skies a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, I know. You know, it's a good thing they suck at it. I'd know if they were looking at me right now. Trust me, they just tried it. <laughs> that would be like the end of like a... I feel like the scrying sesh where you guys get some information on Sharon Babbage. Yeah? Any, any of you guys got some sending so we can flip on them and just tell them that we can ride on them? Uh, not for another hour. But I, I wasted my... I wasted my... Um, I'm in your walls, I'm in your walls, I'm in your walls. <laughs> well, I think it would be really funny. Wouldn't that just be bad for us? <laughs> you do ruin the yeah. element of surprise. I guess Penguin would <laughs> mention that. It would be really funny, though. It would be really funny. I oh, agree. Yeah. I mean, I did tell them that I'm in, in their walls, and uh, kinda, I'm kind of right anyway. I, yeah. I think our element of surprise is already gone. What was that? Wooin? Wooing, uh, wooing the element of surprise. I don't. Uh, d hey, uh, that's enough Wooin. of that. Yeah, uh, that uh, was that was not a pick, got him. <laughs> wooing. No. I'm the one that's wooing around here. No, it, it, once again, like <laughs> Pingling starts to stammer about him using the word wooing, and then Duck comes over and just goes, "Hey!" and kicks you in the shins again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, well, in a more serious note. I guess we know where Ord is. Um, uh, I'm of half the mind of just going straight over there and uh, saving her the old-fashioned way. I still want to sleep first. Yeah, we do need to recharge a little bit. That's tough. That's true. Let's... Uh, maybe we should go uh, and do what the chief instructed and familiarize ourselves with the town a little bit. Gather whatever more information we can... Maybe ask, uh, yeah, we'll just gather information and then we'll reconvene. Yeah. I just realized something that might be useful for us. Completely forgot about this shit, but, uh, we could probably use this to actually to figure out what the fuck happened in this place. Do you mean, like, how it became, how it yeah. is? Yeah, we... we can look in the past. Oh, this as in something that Fortuna is just holding up right now, I see. Yeah, it's the, 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 the Apex item. We can look at the past. As long as we have some a, a little bit of historical context, we can actually explore it and just see what, what the hell happened. That's an excellent idea. Maybe we should... I like that idea. Maybe we should go around and get some context from the inhabitants. Yep. In an hour, we'll reconvene and use 
this uh, wonderful sphere. Awesome, awesome. So, that being the case, I'll switch back to my happy Mayan music, because you guys are in the cool Mayan tribe here. I'm going to go get back in this thing. Yeah, we're in the cool one. Yeah. <laughs> Not the barbarian one. The barbaric one. There's apparently like a, a number of tribes around here. They they mm -hmm. had, they mentioned the uh the barbarian's name one. I don't think you guys asked what the one that Sharon them went to. Oh, I figured that were. Uh I guess the the main thing that Electra is going to be looking for for the information gathering is how many tribes are there and uh I guess she couldn't really ask which one that Cher has gone to. Maybe maybe the neighboring tribes would be the two big things that she's looking for. Like how many and which ones are close. Yeah. Now give me that uh, diplomacy check. That's gathering information. Uh, I, I Actually, I think I might even have something for this. Pull up something really quick. Oh, and actually, uh, it's a little unrelated to our main quest, but uh, it is something that she was curious about that I don't think we've had an answer to yet is uh, all the familiars. Yeah, what about the familiars? Um, I guess uh, she would essentially just ask it straight up to the some of the inhabitants that she'd speak to. Is I've noticed uh, a lot of animal companions. Is there is it tradition to have one in this town? A rather elderly looking clockwork, probably like nods. Mm -hmm. She says she like does like a little bzzz noise, you know. Uh, it is a tradition of our people, she says, uh, right over there. She gestures toward probably, um, like, uh, let's see, where, where would this one, where did I have it labeled? Aha, right down here. Right over here is where our temple resides. For young boys who craft their first familiars to engage in friendly fights, Show off what they have created and see their own uh, their own abilities up front. She kind of like nods. The Clockwork Familiars Arena. And uh, oh, nice. Out of character. Um, it, it's most or like pretty much all of the people or all of the adults that has one or. All the uh, like at least every adult that you've seen definitely has one. Mm -hmm. Every young uh, what well, every young. Uh, Cog will one day grow up, and their coming of age ritual involves them crafting their own, uh, their own creature, either crafting it or becoming friends with them. Like I would imagine, maybe if you're traveling a triple, she gesture toward his little tortoise. Your friend here doesn't seem to have many, many tools on him, but that turtle seems to be very well bonded with him. I, I want to make uh, a crowbar, by the way, now that I got a chance. Nice. Yeah, just give it a few uh, clockwork leaves. Give it about, like, two hours, and the hingeback tortoise <laughs> will make you a, croc uh, a crowbar. Yeah, I don't have enough tools yet, so this is going to be good. Yeah, nice. You're just going to take yourself out <laughs> with all these tools. It's <laughs> manufacturing. Yeah, the, the turtle now just manufactures triple uh, thieves' tools. <laughs> <laughs> but this is this is perfect. Anything he needs. <laughs> I actually got a question. Does this turtle, like, not... Since it's clockwork, does it not make any noise when it's completely still? When it's completely still, yeah, it, it, it's pretty quiet. The only thing that, like, um doesn't... That really makes noise is when you actually feed it the clockwork material and it starts fabricating it because it's bending metal and it's crunching it together. You know, it's doing that stuff. That's really useful. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you could put it on, like, quiet mode and that pretty much just, like, temporarily pauses its production if it's making something so you could remain quiet, you know? It's right. probably just, like, as loud as a watch is or something. Yeah. And, I mean, even, like, your turtle even has somewhat of a heartbeat, Triple. And the, 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 the little ticking inside your turtle that you do here, like, if you put your ear up to it, 
is the same rhythm as that deep thrumming that you hear throughout the city on occasion. That's mm. just kind of become a background to the city, pretty much. It's almost kind of weird. Like, you're standing on a higher building, and you're looking down past, like, you know, some of these buildings and stuff. Every, like, little movement. If you were to take the conglomerate movement of everybody in the city, every clockwork, every building, every ticking, moving mechanism, every leaf, every animal that you see, like, in that giant scope, it's almost like they move the fastest right at those thrums. Like, they're all just kind of moving to this rhythm, almost. That's... I mean, unless somebody else wants to ask it, but that's probably something else that I would want to know, is, uh... Hickalock mentioned something about the thrumming being... having returned. Yes. Was it absent at one point in time? Uh, the old lady is probably with you, probably says something akin to... Um, it is always a constant. Yes, but, but uh, on uh, every so often, once a year, the thrumming reaches its peak, becomes a noticeable, more noticeable feature of our environment, and we know that this is when the uh, the city is at its most alive. Fascinating. And I'll actually take a. If anybody has Golden Port lore, I'll take that. I do not. Actually, I do not. Actually, one person does. One person has Golden Port lore. What am I thinking? I wonder who. It's the, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's the. Uh, yeah, it's that guy. Uh, let's see. Um, your NPC, the um, mm. the the inventor yeah. dude that you top him had him that guy. Oh, uh, he has oh, he's been to Golden Port. He said he was never been to Golden Port. No, it doesn't mean he's, he's got lore. Have... He's got lore. <laughs> uh, he's been there in spirit, of course. Yes, of course. All right, let's see skills, and he's like this level right here. He's yeah. read all the books, just like Penguin has lore in literally every subject. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he kind of like. He's also somewhat interested in that as well, but he kind of passes this off more as a curiosity, not really something that he's, like, figured out, right? If you're asking around about that election, he's just like, it's just curious how... I mean, this is so close to Green Week, I hear. Green Week? Oh, yes. I'm learning so much. Is that when all of the... Is that when the curse lifts? Uh, yes, but naturally, Goldenport is a very, very polluted um, city. And so organics can't really live there for too long in that sort of environment. So for one week leading up to the inventor's council that we're going to, uh, a week or two, usually it kind of depends on their schedule, they kind of turn off all the machines and factories that are polluting the air, clean up the air a little bit to make it a little bit more habitable for when the clockwork ponies eventually hey, turn into their normal <laughs> selves again. <laughs> he kind of nods. It's just odd that, uh, well, I've been asking around too, a lot of these particular denizens here seem to generally have this same sort of celebration when the thrumming comes back around such the same time. It you're saying, be. you're yeah? saying that the increase in magnitude of thrumming roughly correlates to Green Week every year? That would make sense to me, he says, like, with, like, a little bit of a shrug. I mean, if Goldenport um, was to turn off a lot of their factories, a lot of that energy has to go somewhere, and then maybe it bleeds out into the surrounding areas. Crucible theory and all that. Can't, you have to have an equal amount in and an equal amount out in terms of power that, output. That actually makes a lot of sense. That, that really does make a lot of sense. Well, That's a great could... theory. Glad I could uh, be of assistance, he says. Oh, this is also fascinating. Uh, I just wonder if it's got anything. Uh, unfortunately, Babbage and Cher needed to come right now at the worst time. I feel like if something significant significant's going to happen, it's going to happen during Green Week. Hmm. Well, I hope that Maybe doesn't that's put, a, just... a put a damper on the expo. Oh, that would be terrible. 
I don't know. I know we're not going to let them achieve their goals. It's just kind of a coincidence. And uh, she's not going to say it out loud, but she's definitely thinking in her head. Those fixed moments in time. Oh, boy. <laughs> you just get the Kim Possible, like, dun dun dun, and it's fucking ivory drop. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Yeah. All right, who else was gathering knowledge? I know there's a couple people. What? Some people were walking around gathering. Swift, I think you were one of them. Yeah. Um. Yes, but maybe uh. I will try to gather knowledge, and I might have to go back to um. The cute priestess about this one, but since we know that they're trying to do some sort of ritual with spirits. Uh, maybe I can ask about some of their rituals and customs. Ah, fair enough. You go back to uh, where she might be. Um, that is Miss Takana. Yes, Miss Takana um, is probably making an effigy with Madame Fortuna, as she had previously mentioned. Mm. Uh, so she's kind of doing her thing there, and then before we'll, she, uh... she just kind of lets Fortuna do her thing while she comes over. And the swift is it. Nice right, swift sail. Right, swift sail. It is hard a for pleasure. me to say. Ah, uh, well, swift is just fine if it's if uh, in that case. Uh, um, would you mind if I put one of these with you? And she like kind of hands you almost this bracelet. That she also seems to be wearing one. Uh, I don't mind a little accessorizing. Is this uh symbolic? It's. It is hard for me to speak clearly in your tongue. Ah, okay. And he's going to go ahead and put it on, yeah. assuming that it's a translation of... Oh, right, a translation of some sort. It does, and, you know, it kind of goes around your wrist, and as you, um... As you kind so of... So I got this, I got, like, an earring necklace, right? Or something? Yeah, like, they, they, they gave you your choice of, like, earring, necklace... Maybe like a little cape or something. Like, and he was kind of just giving parts of what he was wearing to you guys as like, hey, this had like things with the palace symbol on them, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, well, thank you very much. And he he slides that bracelet right on. Yeah, and um, the, the 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 moment you do, you kind of feel like a somewhat. It's like TV static through your body for a second. <laughs> oh, it's weird. Yeah. And uh, you... my whole body's asleep. Yeah, and when you next speak, for just a couple moments, you can kind of tell that the words that come out of your mouth are like machine sounds. <laughs> and then you kind of get used to it almost immediately, and then you just continue to teach speaking in your normal timbre. Yeah. Ah. Uh, huh. And he like stretches his jaw a little bit. Like he like looks perplexed, right? As he as he makes real, it comes to realize what he's saying, but um. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so I was curious about some more of your rituals and customs. Um, the, uh, namely some of your, well, yeah, rituals and um, whether or not you have any sort of similarity that you know of with neighboring tribes. Uh, our similarities are unfortunately very similar, but it is our... Uh, uh, it is our guardians which more or less have dictated our differences throughout the years. You see, and she starts going over some, um, some initial kind of like, uh, like the various, we'll start with rival tribes, how about that? The Meknara are the ones that we had mentioned. The lost ones, the ones without mm. a guardian. Barbaric. They, yes, they wander between our regions and will occasionally engage in fights with our people. Now, they have survived out here for as long as we have. Well, they are very strong. We generally try to avoid them when we can. But they are not too kind to any of us with guardians. They hate us for having them. They have their own rituals and customs specifically involving... She looks down. Dismantling. You know, like a, mm -hmm. like a, like a mm -hmm. thing. Around us, however, 
there are, let me just do my count really quick, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different tribes. Oh, the, wow. The one your friend went out was named the Chronoli. It is the one a, what? The one where uh, Sharon Babbage had gone toward. She's okay. Naming, she's naming it as the Chronoli, which aligns with that scrying that you guys had because they called him um, Chronocon, if you remember what they called um. Uh, the Guardian Babbage. Chris Chronocon? No, no, they called Babbage in his priest imposter's form. Uh, uh, okay. Chrono Chronocon. Just like how they say, like, um, Tikli or Tikana here, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's... Yeah, okay, okay, get right. Chrono is the sir. Yes. The surname, okay. Yes. Chrono is in time and Tik is in time. Yes. They believe that by harnessing the powers of time, they can regain the favor of their gods. And they are known most notably to be secretive and to perform many more rituals than we do so rituals that you would perhaps not know of and she kind of nods indeed they are deep and powerful rituals i am i i know this much they use it on those who would breach their walls we have had a few of our own go missing on our borders with them never to be seen again Hmm. Let me ask you, Tikana. Do you know of any rituals that may be performed with a uh, spirit? An actual ghost or a spirit? I cannot be too certain of any particular rituals that would involve spirits, she says, shaking her head. Though I would not put it past the Kronolai to know such things. My particular uh, forms of magic I have connected with natures more prominently than many of us here. We all in this city adore the natural world around us, she says like with like a, a big nod. And those with the gifts such as I, she actually gives like the first bit of magic that you've probably seen in this entire area. She flashes like a little like hand trip and a little clockwork flower comes out of her hoof. Very few of us have this gift here, and it is why I am labeled the Head Priestess of Worship. We believe in the balance of nature in all things. Interesting. Um, okay, so... Just doesn't really know. But that's still insightful as to at least two of those tribes. There's a lot of tribes. That's a, that's more than I expected. So Man, Many of them are too far for us to really have ever crossed each other's paths, she says. So are you, how do you know that there's only three pieces and a key broken of the sea engine? It is, how do you know there's not more in the other tribes? It is simply what we have gleaned from... Uh, our book and she just holds out her hoof and one of like the uh servants in the um in the area kind of like hands mm. her that book of facts that you said earlier so one king cog in your tribe uh a guardian of the mechnara no no not the mechnara the of the chrono lie uh the chrono lie have their own yes yes and she kind of uh she just kind of nod to that uh, as does every major tribe who's gifted a piece of Enakini Kai upon their banishment from the Holy Lands. I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to just get a head count, if you will. Uh, and I just have to pull up my notes because I wrote this one down for theirs. Hold on. Which, where do they have that? Uh, yes, okay. And so, um, you're trying to ask about their guardians, yeah? The guardians of neighboring tribes, yes. Ah. Like, where, like, how far off those guardians may be. There's, sh like, to confirm that there's only, I think, three guardians and then the key to make the four parts, or is there a fourth guardian? The guardians that I am aware of, based on our histories, she says are ours, obviously, the King Cog, 
massive steam back gorilla she says um and and this is where she like as she says it right her hooves go up and there's this whole like red thing behind her what illuminates this uh hieroglyph that they had inscribed into the wall with electricity that shows king Kong ah. beating his chest yeah and great they, showmanship yes and the chrono lies she gestures toward a smaller one um to the to the other wall which illuminates kind of blue and it almost seems to be an an owl or a bird of some kind that just seems to have an hourglass inscribed across its 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 um its eyes our wing our and wing our wing yes um and the only other one that we have had contact with in the past gear galan is she, is she says um the tribe name i should, I should specify gear galan is that tribe's name and she gestures to the other, uh, the opposite uh, wall from um, Chrono Lies, and uh, seems to be like almost like a lion uh, made of clockwork. Its mane kind of has has a lot of those intertwining gears. And as she like kind of gestures that way, um, the electricity through that hieroglyph kind of makes this lion roar, like reverberate through the through the walls. Lion gear. Lion gear. That leaves uh, three tribes with guardians, the Mechnara without a guardian, and I assume midly three other tribes still without guardians? The other three, I am sure, have a guardian of sorts. Though Just I've... not a guardian coming from the sea engine. We have not been able to ascertain as much. She shakes her head. Uh, our own guardian, King Cog, restricts us from exploring outward. Would your guardian be upset if me and my uh, party members ventured out and returned afterwards? King Cog lets no one leave his territory. No one leave the territory, huh? Where is the King Cog, by the way. King Cog is set deep within the jungle. And she kind of like nods. It is information only known by me and my brother. In fact, she says, this year, uh, we too were planning to go to their lair. One which we, we have found, a holy place that opens during the ceremony. Only opens during the ceremony. Uh, is it okay? Could we possibly be permitted to join you for that venture? I am not one to stop you, gods. When exactly uh, are you planning on taking that venture? Uh, and she kind of like blinks. Perhaps we can take it earlier than normal. Uh, tomorrow, she says. <laughs> Hmm, that's extremely early, but okay, that's perfect. I will have to convene with my party members, my yeah. fellow gods. Very well, and it's probably right around then that Fortuna comes forward with the most gruesome fucking effigy you've ever seen. And I've got to go. It was, uh, <laughs> it was a pleasure to speak with you, Miss Tikana. He's going to lift a hoof and kiss the wrist of it. Uh, yes, and she kind of like looks down, like, confused. Is this a ritual of your own? It is a goodbye ritual. Then I then do old... the same to you. She lifts up your hoof. She gives the, the she gives like the wrist yes. a kiss. Yeah. Oh, and that reminds me. And then he'll pull off the um the bracelet that's on that wrist. Yeah, you feel that and st and... that static through your body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he'll return it with a polite nod, and then he'll leave. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Oh, that was informative. Yeah. Y'all got some information. So what did you guys find out? Well, is anyone else... Uh, is anyone else trying to find anything out? Like, uh... I'm at a loss. Triple? Uh... Just checking. I don't know. 
It, it definitely seems one thing is is clear between uh, Ophiuchus and Electra. I'll give you guys this: is that um, mm. the commoners here seem to be kind of like have this mythos about their current thing that Intraconic? like iconic. That yeah, like remember how they had asked Electra if mm -hmm. she brings luck, right? Clearly, when the gods come down, a lot of the hieroglyphy ha uh, hieroglyphs and that kind of thing, right? kind of depicts an unlucky Kieran and a lucky one. And so people mm. seem to be kind of trying to determine which one of you two Kierans is the lucky and unlucky one. The Why are we always stereotyped? Yes. And yeah, th that word mm. does come up if Fortuna's with them and can translate. Yeah, like they, they consider one of you two Kierans Lenormask. <laughs> it's ah. possible that they ran into a, a couple of Lenorms in their history. It would explain... As long as they don't try to, you know, exact some kind of revenge or take some kind of, I don't know, perform some kind of ritual for luck on us. Yeah. <laughs> now, it's clear that, like, it's still up in the air as to which one you guys are. Because, I mean, like, by the time you guys reconvene as a group, Electra and Ophi, you both have, like, various clockwork flower wreaths around your head. Like, people have determined that, uh, that you're the lucky one, or you're the lucky one, you know, like... They can't really tell, but you guys both come very decorated back to the group. <laughs> hmm. Well, who someone has, went... Who has... Someone's <laughs> went shopping. Who's more decorated? Who's who's the luckier one? <laughs> who's got the most... Uh, hey, who's give me getting the better decorations? Give me a diplomacy you... check between you two. Oh. <laughs> a contested diplomacy check. <laughs> um, I mean, she's gonna win that. There's no way she doesn't. Um, it's, it's possible you do. I I'm, I'm trying to. Trying Electra, to, to... Electra rolls a nat one. Kieran Luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, we got a thirty six. Steals on my Kieran Luck. Uh, there you go. Oh. 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 Damn. <laughs> All right, Electra, you come with What's one that more. Mean, though? You got one more flower on your. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess we're about equal. I guess they think we're both lucky. Mm. <laughs> Little do they know I'm the lucky one. Half of them. <laughs> ha half of them think you're lucky. Half the other half think I'm lucky. So, half of them hate us. <laughs> I feel like hate isn't right. It's mm. probably more something akin to like what would what would it be what would yin and yang be called in Astian? Um Kin and Kang, I don't know. <laughs> King and Kong. King and Kong. King and uh, Kong. Chicken talk. Chicken talk. Chicken talk, honestly. Honestly, yeah, that would be um, the clockwork one, right? I feel like it's probably something more to do with like Tick and talk, where there's a lucky and an unlucky, and you can't have one without the other. I think it's got more to do with whenever they stub their toe. We'll see. <laughs> triple, you as stub, long as they you don't stub, sacrifice you, you stub us. your hoof again at this exact moment, Triple. Why? Why? Why would the universe do this to me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm looking around for where Gunther is. Uh, Gunther is currently like trying to sneak up on Triple's turtle. Hmm. Oh. oh no no no! That's not gonna happen. <laughs> that. Yeah. That's some wall and promise wall shit going on right now. Of leaves. What was that? Erect a wall of leaves around it. Yeah yeah, you do so, and then Gunter's whole plan is now suddenly foiled. <laughs> Crunch. Um, but yes, yeah, as far as um the info we got there. I don't reckon I have anything I can act on with that right now, but I will keep that in mind. Yeah, feel free to discuss it up. Uh, anything that you guys, because I know like different people got different information. It'd be good to mm -hmm. share with your party, you know. Ophi will yes. say to you guys that uh, they're machines that believe in luck, which is very strange. They Weird. do seem, they do seem quite uh, devout to their god. It doesn't seem like they're what you'd expect from a typical machine. They're just like any old pony. Mm. Well, I'm gonna um share all the 
the news I learned of the various tribes, the neighboring ones that have guardians. And fortunately, I couldn't figure out what they may be doing with Ord spirits. But at the very least, we seem to have a uh, an appointment for going to meet King Cog tomorrow. Oh, and apparently no one gets to leave King Cog's territory, so that may cause an issue with us. Did you find out anything about the history of this place? Did you? I was kind of out for the whole thing. E <laughs> not history much, no. Hmm. History like what? Like, here's this thing. Um, uh, I, I bounced that idea earlier, but I got the, the, the fancy time spell on this uh, this uh, crystal ball thing, so I can actually look in the past. But if I just know just one shred of uh, historical context, I can pinpoint exactly what happened and why this thing is here, since we're so curious about it. Figuring out what, where this... Uh, well, came from. We do we do have a decent amount of historical context. I'm assuming you're wanting to look into the past to see how the piece of uh, the sea engine got here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, we already know that the sea engine was broken into several pieces and each piece became a guardian of one of these uh, tribes. That's a piece of history. All right. Namely, can we roll that J? I want to use my fancy ball. Alrighty, you could use your fancy ball. What are you trying to scry? What event of history are you trying to scry on? We're trying to figure out how the the, the pieces of the sea engine got separated and uh, got put in here. Gotcha. Yeah, you start scrying, 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 scrying. That being said, if you're scrying on this particular historical context, who's your target? Who's your target person? You have to target somebody with that. Oh, it's... Horrible. Like, you got the historical target context, just who in that historical context are you targeting? Last time I used this thing, I just fucking uh, showed fucking pants to everybody with no target. Uh, okay, yeah, look, um... <laughs> hmm. Yeah, you do have who's nuts the, here. I, That's a perfectly who, valid target for this. Probably nuts. He's been here, yeah. Yeah. All right, you target Nuts, who doesn't seem to remember that particular part, but as you start trying back your crystal ball, like, Nuts is probably there just like, hey, hey what do you need me for, right? And you're all, your ball's already going, right? You start seeing <laughs> pictures in there, right? And this is, it kind of, like, shifts you back. It's almost like that sepia, old style, right? Like, memory sort of tone. And up in the air, there are hundreds of airships. Hundreds of airships, all with varying things, right? Different parts of the, uh, of that kind of thing. And then you, uh, um, and then you, you know, like you, you start looking around in the crystal ball, right? Mm -hmm. And there's wildfire. You're kind of like looking from uh, somewhat of a, a nuts's point of view, right? Um, as he's, he's, he's clearly just working in this particular area and, and just certainly kind of excited to see that wildfire is kind of in this area too. He seems to be looking for perhaps Crucible though. But you start hearing like wildfire just kind of like chuff as he looks up into the air and sees all these varying parts of what seems to be some massive clockwork things being flown out northward. <laughs> he says. And um... You suddenly see the image of another one on the card, one of the cards, commemorative cards you got. Um, I forgot to say his name. Um, Chris, what was it? Nevermore. Demi Zone? Yeah, Nevermore. Nevermore. Yeah, he kind of comes over here, like over toward Wildfire. Is all this really necessary? <laughs> he deserves it, he says. He kind of has this definite spite in his voice a little bit as all of these things are, are um, being kind of carted outwards. And Nevermore continues on. You know, a little forgiveness goes quite a long way. Don't lecture me, bird. I do not want to hear it. We have been at this for years, and you know it. And, uh, like, Nevermore kind of like looks up. Where is he anyway? He is probably on one of those ships up there. Learning about 
where each part is going to be dropped. I thought they were all just going north. It would be better if they were separated out into many different places. It is what I have ascertained as the best course of action for the preservation of the natural world and the safety of others. Oh. Well, you are certainly a wise one. I'm not one to argue with an arch druid such as yourself, I suppose. And, like, all the while, you see that nuts right here. Like, he's actually kind of transfixed by this sight, because he clearly doesn't fucking remember this shit. But he's, like, kind of peeking around the side and, like, listening in on this conversation, you know? Um, but that's, like, they kind of go back and forth about that just for a little bit. After a moment, or after, after a while, like, Nevermore kind of just says, Well, I'm going to go find some of the others. I think that they're also probably looking for our friend. You, uh, have a good day, and I hope that we meet again. Same, I suppose. And then Nevermore and uh, Wildfire kind of part ways, and then the crystal ball starts to go a little foggy, as um, that particular scrying and that moment of history kind of fades off. Guarding in Goldenport, then. We know for a fact that they're still guarding something in there. Uh, well, that's what I was ask. I was unsure about earlier. That's why I was. Did they did they mention they're still guarding something? I mean, from uh, I assume they're guarding something from all the talks we've had. You know, Golden Port being super protected and stuff. Mm. Uh. Uh. I don't remember. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if they would know either, because we were asking about it a little bit earlier, but. And we don't really have a way of finding out unless we get there. But we have this here keeping us busy now. Uh. Alright, well I guess it won't hurt to go ask them again. We can ask them um, tomorrow on the journey to King Cog, perhaps more. Yeah. That sounds like a good time. To bring it up. Let's go. Where? To bed. <laughs> to bed. To bed. Yes, we have uh, engaged in a march into Fort Advocacy, engaged in an immediate train chase, crashed, trekked through a uh, mechanical jungle, and then socialized with its village. I think that's a good enough day. Were we lesser folks, we would have slept during the train crash. <laughs> I really hope sure had been. The good news is, no one has to keep watch tonight. Right. Now, um, Triple, there's one last thing I should mention for you. Mm hmm? There seems to be some very brave youngsters among the tribal people. And at one point, as you guys are probably headed toward bed, right, um, one of them kind of approaches you, right? Like, all of his friends are just like, come on, go do, do it, right? They like, push their friend out a little bit. Yeah, and he yeah. puffs up his chest, and he walks right up to you, Triple. I want to challenge you, he says, to a familiar duel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it. Listen here, kid. kid. I'm the only one here who could win a familiar <laughs> duel. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah, he kind of looks like spooked for a second, but has to like, you know, keep the tough face. Okay, during... Uh, and he, he stammers for a little bit. Two days from now, you're on. 
<laughs> better train for those two days. Yeah. You don't need it. Okay. You're gonna be representing all of your friends too. And he kind it's of very important. He kind of skips off, and as he does, as, as he as he runs, so like all of his friends are like, "Whoa, so cool! You just challenged a god." Two of them are like, "You fucking idiot!" Uh, you know, like. <laughs> uh, in and before, then. In what? In before his familiar is King Pog. <laughs> yeah, full size too. It's not even like a mini version. Yeah, and then um, the other ones are gonna be like, "Are you gonna make any modifications to him?" And they they say like like he's just like, uh, "Probably, I gotta make a few tweaks. I don't know. I don't know if I could take him." You know, like they're gonna they're running off. They're just being kids, but this they're challenges of bravery, right? Coming of age ceremony. No better challenge than one against the gods, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, he's he's trying his luck. Are you gonna go leafy under? Um, hmm, sorry, I, I forgot my push to talk button. Um, no. <laughs> if if they <laughs> if I go easy on them, uh, they'll tell. They'll be able to tell that, and uh, they'll be disappointed even if they beat me. So uh, no, I'm just gonna go as hard as I can. The worst that can happen Wait. is that you know they lose. Okay, no. If you go as hard as you can, you're probably gonna kill them. No, oh, it's just, it's just, you know... Oh, wait, really? Can this thing die in there? The turtle, like, looks up at you very, like, non-comprehensibly. Oh, we can't have this thing die. <laughs> 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 Too late now. I've been here for, like, a day now, and he's yeah. already made me this. All right, well, he's going to prepare for that. Maybe if there's, like, a crafting check he can make. <laughs> yeah. That'll be a crafting check overnight. Start out fitting your uh, your turtle. Yeah. <laughs> I like how you agreed to the challenge. You're like, wait, my turtle can die. <laughs> you know what? You know what, people? I can uh, I, I can body you something. Yeah, I I could use a little help. Oh, baby, this yeah. is good. I'm um, yeah. You, you you can glue this. You can install this to to your turtle for the time being. <laughs> Fatigued, sick. I'm not sick oh, anymore. Man. Isn't the big little weight on it bigger than go faster? Yeah, just install this on your turtle. You, you can give it back when it's done. No. <laughs> Second like thing. a pinewood derby, right? I just I just saw what you posted, by the way. Yeah, yeah. we can just <laughs> modify. It's bigger than the turtle. <laughs> it's a. Uh, it really is a, a metal slug boss design. <laughs> also, are we uh, unsickened, Mimili? Is this is has the miasma? Thinned. Yes, actually, um, funnily enough, as you've been in this area, you've probably picked up and noticed like these clockwork trees actually do have natural filters through those cogs in their leaves. Hang on a second, did you go to sleep? I am. I don't know about well, you guys. We were about to go to sleep and then Triple got accosted, but yes, sleep or wait. I could push the sleep button on the actual party thing and just do it all at once. So, yeah, let me. Yes, please. Go ahead and do that. Secondary question I have for everybody: You guys have had rations from Madame Fortuna, but the secondary question comes into play. There is no water here. I can create water. Mm, wonderful. There's probably water. Triple can make water. Right. He does have the infinite water. Yep. I wouldn't go anywhere without it. Look at you, Triple, being the survivalist of the party yet again. Well, I'll take that on my spell list then. The endless <laughs> decanter. Yeah. So, wait, are we awake now? Yes, you guys do, um, actually... <laughs> there it is. Oh, no, it's repeating. Now, if, if she did all that by holding down the sleep button, I wonder... You know what? I don't even want to know what's going to happen if we hold down the friendly fire button. Look, here's, here's the thing. Let's find you out. Guys want to read the, the manual? That's the safest way to do it. You I hope he presses menu? a random button. Oh. <laughs> Roll a 1D however many buttons. Okay. <laughs> no, don't manual? do that. Don't do where's, that. Where's your manual? What does this button do? <laughs> that's that's a last that... Uh, Worships chaos if I've ever seen one. Twenty four, <laughs> damn. I don't, I don't fucking know what that means, but uh... following her hearts. 
Now, um, the next day, after having met with some of the locals and that kind of thing, when you guys wake up, you guys are awoken to what seems to be many presents outside of your guys' door. Presents, seems... letters, flowers, weird dolls. Oh, this must be the rest of my fan mail from the crystal ball. <laughs> <laughs> Would you look at this letter? It says one zero 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 one zero 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 one 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 zero zero one one zero two. How how There's a two. There's a two. Why is there a two? And ah. it's actually like that is actually a fact. There is occasionally a two among the zeros for some reason. It must have um, had a glitch. Hmm. That's not I didn't know that went to base three. But yeah. Uh, are all these just in binary? Most of the letters in that kind of thing seem to either be like scrawled and binary, like, you know, like machine language, that kind of stuff, right? Or just um, hieroglyphs on their own. Like, some people just like to send you guys pictures. Um, like, there's like a couple ones that you probably get from some neighborhood children, for example, that just says, like, um, like Swift, you probably get one, for example. A kid had probably drawn, drove, uh, drew of. Swift getting his body buffered with like a buffering thing or something, and that's why he's so shiny, you know, like that's their interpretation. Yeah. Why you're like so like Opie and Electra. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Opie and Electra, you guys get this yeah, like this mix of yeah, with Opie and Electra. And like <laughs> yeah, gonna like buffer, right? Oh yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, like, yeah. It's like they're buffering you and that's they're just kind of assuming that that's probably yeah, how you guys are. Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, our gifts are either they're telling us to go away or bless them with luck. <laughs> I don't... Electra probably gets, like, one letter that probably says, like, do you like me? And it has two boxes that say yes or no. <laughs> one or no. zero. Yeah, one zero or zero. Is there any return address <laughs> at all? I'm 100% certain you were going to say that or not. I'm sorry. How do you know? I was going to say it's one or one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um the well you see they don't really put a return address on there they just assume that the gods know exactly where they are at all times on the presence right um I see. so there you go it's kind of a mystery <laughs> we can mm. use a tracker here maybe just have new planners nip on it so we can actually track these events but it's not here. i don't i don't need to find it i was just wondering no, what is with your secret admirer. no 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 i was I was just wondering if they had any chance at all. Essentially out of character, she was just wondering if they essentially left the note, do you like me, yes or no, with no way of telling who left the note. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like they kind of assume that you know what to do with the note once you've uh, mm -hmm. answered the question. That's quite all right, Fertina. Mm -hmm. Let's pull the horn and ask the whole town who wrote it. Oh my god, that's so <laughs> bad. Think... Don't think that's necessary. All right. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. If if it happens again. Uh, you know what? Maybe. Now, one of the first people to come and greet you is, of course, the head honcho himself, Mr. Ticklock, who shows up. You hear his rolling, right? <laughs> good morning. No, no, good morning, Chief. And uh, all of the blinds just slowly start to kind of open on their own as if it's like on a natural process, you know. Um, ah, the sun is bright today. A good sign. Mm. Yeah. A great day to visit a guardian, is it not? A wonderful one. I heard that Chikana was making preparations for such thing. Perhaps she might have an update for you on that. She was up all night. Mm. Oh, bless her heart. Update? <laughs> uh, yeah, like, you know, <laughs> an update. An OTA. <laughs> like, like, she's telling us something, or is she, she gonna blow shit to well, she, The guy is just saying, um, you know, she spent all night, like, doing something. I'm still worried about what they meant by connect. Oh, you see, you gotta stick this up your butt. 
I thought I went in the back of my neck. No, wait. They said one goes in my mouth and one goes in my butt. Uh, I don't These wait, maybe that was a dream. Same people as you. These organics are quite strange. Yeah, they have no voice. They, they're not compatible with any system. Ah, proprietary software. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It. Wait, wait, was Crucible an open source guy or, no, or proprietary <laughs> guy? Oh, definitely, like, fucking proprietary. He's no. Apple, dude. Yeah, he's Apple. I'm gonna hit the bed. <laughs> what was that? Oh, my my spells never got reset. It says Meme they already hit the bed. It lied. I know it lied though. It lied. Well, feel free to hit it again. Liar. And you guys got Ophi with you if you guys lie. <laughs> Imagine you guys are at full health again. That works. Uh. Electra is going to use a spell though. Um. She's gonna use a uh, telepathy. To talk to her. To talk to who? Her party. Targets. Creatures. Telepathic. Yeah, she she essentially just wants to talk to her party without talking to Ticklock. Yeah, makes sense. And she's going to make a connection and say, we still need to decide what we are actually going to do with this King Cog. Mm. Do we? Yes, he's part of the the sea engine. Sharon and Babbage are going to be coming for him. Are we gonna? Well, we can stop them. I yeah. still we don't think. Have to worry about it. So are I... we gonna stop them and leave him here to defend the town? He's done it for however long he's been here. I agree. Oh. I'd be fine with that. I think we should just come to some sort of decision, so we're not fumbling over each other when. The moment arises. No, no, she's quite right. We should be on the same page. There's, there's just waiting for them, but we also don't know what they're trying. They're trying to do something we saw in the scry. We just don't know exactly what they're doing. Well, one easy way to fix that: we scry on them again, find out where they are, and track them down. If that's what we think that we're all going to do, I'm if fine with that. I think that would be the best solution, is to stop them directly. Why did all of our trackers go in the other party? If we... Mm -hmm. If we could... If we could at least get in their vicinity, we could have... If we can have Triple sneak the key off of them, then... Again, that's... A, that's a, a huge win for us right away, but... We might have to talk to King Cog and explain the situation to try to grant his, uh, to gain his, uh, blessing. His blessing requires a sacrifice. Yeah, uh, we well, we have an effigy. Yeah, we already prepared a bunch of uh, weird organ dolls. Oh, okay. I guess that works. Uh, look, and if we need more, we can probably, no, we can't find anybody around here with the organ. So, what I'm but... hearing is as of now sorry you finished no no unless anybody here wants to volunteer to get some extra organ to harvest the uh, rich and throat. i uh, could not hear you stupid sorry idea, stupid idea <laughs> i think fortuna said uh we've already got an effigy so unless anybody wants to volunteer for sacrifice we're good no 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 not sacrifice if we need more um Anybody wants to volunteer to cast some grizzly growth on them so I can have her some uh, more of these organs? I, I think your effigy is fine already. I just wanted to be exactly sure about our stance on King Cog because I feel like we're going to have to make a decision one way or the other pretty soon here. That's yeah. a bridge I'm willing to cross when I get to it. Oh, let's just go to King Cog already then. I just want to be on the same bridge when we have to cross it. Someone's going to so, cross it. So we're all in agreement that we are going to leave King Cog in defense of this town and essentially try to stop Sharon Babbage directly then. 
I take that Speak as now, a yes. Or forever hold your peace. Uh, if if he'll let us again, we don't. Well, I don't know what if situation changes. We can decide that then. I just want to make sure. And we're on the so long as now. we can get a scry on them and find out where we we don't know how far off they are. Again, we don't have our we don't have our trackers with us. But it doesn't yep. really matter because it's going to be something we're going to, need to make the, the decision about eventually. Well, I was a, wondering that. whether we wanted to try to destroy King Cog or not. No. Nah. Okay. I'd really rather not, considering it has a part of, uh, you know... I a... agree. <laughs> a... <laughs> I agree. A death machine in it? Well, that was... is gonna cry if we destroy a piece of historical... Okay. The only reason I asked is because the destruction of King Cog would guarantee that this for this 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 horror would never be woken up again. I think you're explaining that to people who don't, uh, who aren't in disagreement with you. Yeah, technically, if we destroy one part, they're fucked. I'm not trying to explain anything. I was just trying to clarify what our. View but we is. see the well, we see the significance that it has on this tribe. Let's get so, moving. Okay. You know, I've been thinking of something. If they got orbs, they're probably gonna meet us eventually. Oh, what was that announced? You cut since out. They, since they got orbs, they are probably gonna meet us eventually. Because well, we don't know exactly what they're doing with her. Yeah, true, but, uh, you know, you heard what they said. It's, 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 it's their bargaining chip. Mm, that I is true. I figured she was the spirit. What? Wasn't there supposed to be some sort of spirit sacrifice? Oh, right. I figured. Well, what does she that... care? She'll just appear right next to uh, Swift. She, she is a spirit. And she can still be sacrificed. She's currently bottled up. Uh, Pingling, Pingling's probably going to to come over and be like, "I'm more worried about the fact that he's a necromancer, and what is a ghost." Oh. Well, I'm technically a necromancer too, so I take offense to that painting. <laughs> he kind of gives like a little bit of a chuckle. Oh, <laughs> you wish you were. Ask your girlfriend. Dog, dog. And duck comes over. Hey, and kicks you in the shins. Hey. Hey, and she kicks you again in the shins. I'm rude. What the fuck? I don't know. I just kind of thought somebody was making fun of me. I'm sorry. I didn't even bring any popcorn. <laughs> Damn! Damn. <laughs> I'm just on edge right now, she says, and she kind of does like a little like air boxing with her with her hooves a little bit. That's uh, great, Doc. Honestly, it is. Use <laughs> some of that energy towards Babbage, and share uh, when we find them. I'm gonna kick him in the butt. She... I feel like she stole some of my energy when she got resurrected. No, look, look, uh, look, Doc. Once you do some damage, you gotta kick them in the balls, okay? That's rude! Kick Cher right in her balls! Look! Look! Babbage! Babbage is even more rude! He deserves it! Yeah, but that's just- start spinning those things again. Isn't he the guy who killed you? Uh... And she gotta think. I guess? Exactly! But he didn't kick me in the balls! Yeah, but he killed you. Take him in the balls. <laughs> Give me a diplomacy roll. One good oh, turn deserves another. <laughs> one d one d two. Which one's let's, gonna get let's, hit? Let's, let's be honest here. A kick in the balls is uh, like orders of magnitude lower than killing somebody. That's true. No wait, that's crafting. Sorry. Uh, no, oh. Damn. Well, all right. Yeah. It's that's... still a twenty, though. <laughs> yep. That'd do it. That'd do it. You know, Duck kind of thinks. You know what? You're right. I'll kick him right in the balls next time I see him. There we go. That's I expect that nothing less. Oh my word. <laughs> all right. Let's get moving. All right. The problem is, is you got no don't know exactly where to move to. So where are you guys going? Uh, to meet up a with... guided tour. To yeah. Meet to meet King up with Gang. the chief yeah. in Tricana or Ticana. Yeah, so you go go find where 
Takana is. Now, Takana herself is actually in her priest studio, if you will, her temple. Let me switch my, uh, let me switch my music here. And she looks worried. All three of the, um, all three of those, like, electronic things, like, around, like, the hieroglyphs around that are, that are illuminated by electricity, they're all, like, lit up. And she looks frightened at this aspect. Uh, what seems to be the problem, Miss Tricana? They are abnormal. Including she's... King Cog? And she kind of like looks at King Cog, who's like the biggest, most upfront one there. And he's like, his massage is flickering. Yes, these particular energies are in sync with theirs. And look, and those three walls that I had mentioned before that were kind of like displaying the, um, you know, those things that she gestured to them, right? Normally they were a very good display. Now they're kind of like zapping and you know, like, um, like actually, uh, fluctuating a little bit, especially King Cog. I do not know what has angered him so close to our festival. Well, I think that we better just get, get there as soon as we can. She looks like terrified. Go and seek King Cog. I, I am not a god like you. And she like looks at you guys like a little like, holy shit, are you really pulling me into this godly battle of yours? <laughs> like, you know, we need to know where he is. I will guide you we there, might... but I cannot fight. I. We I do mean, not we... ask you to fight. We oh. would never expect that. Just tell us where it is. In the yeah, she falls into a bow. We will guide you there. You follow. You follow. Now, I'm going to take a quick five-minute break because I just finished up what I'm cooking here because I do need it to finish up. This. I keep hearing that <laughs> I know. in the I background. I'm, I'm, I am, like, super fucking hungry right now, so I've been cooking as I've been DMing. So, like, it's... <laughs> That's some nice pissy style. Let him cook. Let him cook. <laughs> yeah. So we're taking yeah. a quick five-minute break. I would like you guys to kind of continue, you know, talking about things if you guys want. It's, it's kind of interesting hearing what you guys' opinions and things are. Wow, it's on. so loud. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, it is. So anyway, it's like I'm cars driving on the freeway. Damn, I'm looking girl, for anything. Like that. <laughs> Damn. Okay, um, well, I'm this seems a little testy. Machines. So, just to get things clear we are currently being led out of the town by the priestess into the forest on our way to king cog who is supposedly acting funny yep I think, yeah okay i guess girl, presumably uh, stare and babbage got whatever they are doing off with their ritual mm -hmm. must have stole something but I don't know if we'll have a way to communicate with King Cog. We'll probably have to beat him down in order to communicate. I don't know. I'm dubious about how sentient King Cog is going to be in the first place. He's a piece of the sea engine. It was. I mean, I feel like there's wet. probably some way to communicate with him. Maybe. It's a work of, of, um, of what's Crucible. his name? And everything he makes is some kind of sentient. Yeah. What if? Uh, I wonder. I wonder if there's a way to interface with it. You know, I'm doing simple steps. He's doing simple steps. Maybe That's very it. lewd. Um. Shut up. This is probably stupid. No, but yeah, like all Crucible stuff can like plug into each other. It's all modular. Yeah. Yeah, we had yeah, to plug modular. into the train. That was cool. I think, if anything, Fortuna would be the one to interface with King Cog just for well, that we reason. We certainly can't. But, um, I do have a question, and this might be stupid, but, uh, what was the sea engine originally created for? What was its purpose? Uh, it was to try to destroy the other horrors, but then, uh... Correct. Know, something, yes. Something, something messed up. It's a big war machine. 
it, it was in fact so made to defeat the other horrors. The, there were okay, so it was made after the other horrors. Yeah, and it was, it was made the, solely to destroy them. It was the last was, horror of the four. Yeah, so it was pretty much just uh, yeah. Let's uh, make this big machine to destroy the horrors. Oh hey, somebody hmm. popped up in the programming and pretty much just says so they attack everybody. Yeah, mm. this. Steam gorillas, do we remember what kind of damage they were doing other than just like physical? Were they doing any fire damage? Or electrical? I don't think so. Uh, I remember, I think they took. Yeah, they took additional extra electrical, right. electric damage. Yeah, they definitely took extra damage with electricity, but I don't think they were dealing any extras out. I think it was just blunt. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm gonna prepare for, uh, a fire big, damage um, on us a big historical context just to keep in mind that i'm sure moon planner has told you guys and it is kind of just in the history books is like casualist you know the biggest thing is that about the fourth horror about indikini kai people usually associate is one quote and that's apparently when they had released the thing um crucible had said protect our home and it took that very literally <laughs> and now mm, that, that was see. that was the problem and so now you have all these pieces of indikini kai that are apparently around and what are they doing? Is it common knowledge if Crucible was a uh, mechanical, bef like while he made Anakin Kai? Uh, as far as you know, Noah's, well, things Noah's things a completely acceptable answer. Uh, as far as you guys know, I mean, everything only started becoming mechanical after Crucibles and Wildfires, like little fucking war um, about this thing. And then, you know, that thing got released, they had to defeat it. And pretty much mm -hmm. that was uh, Crucible losing that little fight. And then the nature gods took that as a concession and cursed anybody who helped make the uh, city into being clockwork. And that's kind of rough. common, like, yeah. historical like, knowledge. Yeah, like, people who are clockwork have known this for a long, long-ass time. Mm -hmm. Like, if, they, if there's a clockwork pony at all... Yeah, Electra would know it. Yeah, they, they're, they're, they're Phantasm, fam I'm yeah. sure, would have told her. Their family line has... It's very obvious that their family line had something to do with creating the city. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. I wonder, maybe if we stop this uh, fucking uh, thing, uh, the, you know, the PN just for good, maybe we can break that tension. Uh, Electra, you know you can't do that. So if going in and put that spell effect on yourself. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, I would know that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, w I, I would know either it's impossible to do so or that we just didn't do it, so. <laughs> Break the clockwork pony curse. So, all I'm saying is that they got it kind of rough, you know? Like, I'm sure it's. God, kind of fucking gay. All I'm saying, yeah. Fortuna, is I'm sure it's possible, but I don't think that we achieve it. Uh, maybe they like hmm. Alright. And as you guys start getting closer and closer to your destination, effectively, Tikana starts to kind of slow up. We are close. She like looks outwards. All of the birds and clockwork things have kind of stopped in this area, and now the only thing you could really hear are the giant gears continuing to thrum with that beat. It's like no wildlife, though. Further past there is Cog's Lair. Uh. Hmm. It's like gesturing forward. Is it a cave? Is it like something that we like a landmark that we can? You guys haven't. She's just gesturing further into the trees. You guys are free to go there. If you guys are going forward, I'll load you into the next map. This up to you. <laughs> All right. Oh, if this so... is just... twenty minute yeah. adventure. Come on. Twenty minute adventure. Yeah. Twenty minute adventure. You start uh, going. Oh, that. let me roll. Yeah, let me uh, grab something here. Nice. Uh, let's see. Machines don't take negative damage, right? All right, and you guys start going forward, opening up into what seems to be well, a fairly familiar sight. 
We have a familiar site. Oh yes, familiar. a fairly familiar site actually. Let me place you guys on the map here in the orientation that you're coming in, I imagine. Uh, yep, there we go. Entering the area. You start seeing numerous little control panels, things that are effectively set around in decrepit, uh, decrepit, bro in a decrepit broken fashion. This is something that uh, those who went down in the bank, I'm sure you recall, the same sort of design. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Um. Oh, this was one of the donjons. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. There was a uh, clockwork dragon inside the cave, and it had the key. Ah, uh, okay, right. And yes, you know, if you're calling from that scrying that you did on the past, apparently they dropped the different parts, Finikini Kai, in different places. Now, here's the Are they the source of the dungeon? Are we gonna have to do the door puzzle again? Oh God! I uh, no, it's open. Wait, is it open? Doors wide open. In fact, yeah. you actually hear this rhythmic breathing inside of it. <sighs> Like someone up before us. Uh, there's like big blasts of steam that are coming out. Hey, Triple, why don't you go get a better look? Going into sneak mode. Oh, also. Yeah, I might want to do this. I'm going to do what? Uh, just really quickly recharge, and then I'm going to go stealth. Nice. All right, Triple, you start sneaking in. Do, 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 do. As you sneak in, you'll find... Well, it's not nearly as hot as the one in the donjon. As you kind of sneak past into this initial hallway, getting into the thing, you actually see what seems to be illuminated blue at the very end of it, leading in that track. It seems almost... Actually, I could just do this. As you're kind of, like, sneaking in effectively. This is uh, what you can report back to the party that you see. Let me bring back... Uh, let me br drag you to this map. Pull the scene. This is what the interior of this looks like. Ooh, okay, okay. Um, let's do just a basic uh, notice check. Yeah, give me that blind perception. <sighs> Start hearing that, like, breathing more prominently. Nice breathing. And you look around, you look around, you don't see anything. I imagine at some point in your looking, you turn around. Perhaps there is nothing here. It's just a sound. It's just a speaker. You can't pinpoint wherever it is. It kind of seems to keep moving. And as you turn around to probably go back outside the thing, and you hear it. A voice. Yeah, a voice. You turn around, and you feel a wall. And it's moving. <laughs> hey, I guess we can't. Um... No, no. <laughs> okay, so it's just. It's, the, the, am I? I have no way to react to this. You do. You have time to run back out to the party. Is what I'm saying. Right. I'm setting up the scene for. <laughs> like. Here's the thing. So I'm gonna run yeah. out there, um, and I'm gonna be right next to the door and says the door is closing. So if you think it's a good idea, come in, um, because at this point. Yeah, there's not really much else where to sneak. We're either fighting this guy or we're letting this door close. Yeah, uh, and Triple, you run out. Right when the rest of the party, you guys see these red eyes behind Triple. That certainly wasn't a wall you were running into there, Triple. That was just him. And then, you... and then he roars. Um, he roars a mighty roar that not only shakes the surrounding trees... But that gives me time to hide again. Yes. Hog. <laughs> yes. Uh, like he, he kind of like looks down <laughs> on all fours, looks around toward each, yeah, each one of you guys, and I'm actually going to say that this is a good point to end session okay, today. <laughs> well, oh. 
I'm still gonna swift this before we go. That way, it's there next time. Yeah. Yeah. Roll yeah. initiative. I know, I know you're ready to roll initiative, but I want to refine a couple things on his sheet after today because there was a lot of details. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, I hope you guys had fun. Uh, we're back into the swing of things, y'all. I did. Yeah, that was a fun yeah. session. It's right. always a it's always a good mark of a a good session when it ends earlier than you expected it to. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. or that you wanted it to. Yeah. yeah.